46. Motion in limine? Correct. Okay. And your honor, um, I put you and uh, Ms. Hilton on um, a forward. So I just forwarded to this honorable court and Ms. Hilton. Um, Can I just finish? If we could have an opportunity um, to review anything that is being addressed with the court before it's even addressed so that we can at least be in a position to respond when it is our time to do so, Your Honor. Okay. We would gladly, greatly appreciate that opportunity before we begin addressing whatever the motion and limine is. I, I'm addressing the sound of the court. I'd like to just educate the court and the parties. All right. May I continue? Yes, continue. So um, these are exhibits that were served on this past Thursday by the state. And some of the exhibits include um, statements of witnesses that are not on witness list. It would be a confrontation clause issue, hearsay issue. One of the um, exhibits is Detective Kirkman. He's a very, very fine person. He's been with the city of Atlanta police for over 20 years, probably. And, um, pursuant to his court's order, and I appreciate it. We appreciate it. Um, and Ms. Hilton arranged it. I spoke with him via telephone in January, 2024. He recorded that call. It's his body camera. So you see him and you hear his voice and my voice. And the interview is about 10 minutes, but now it's an exhibit. We were never served with. I have no problem with the interview, but this um, brings me into my next issue, which is not in writing, but I'll, I could put it in writing if you want. But it seems like um, a member of the prosecution team is constantly trying to attempt to interject lawyer, either me, mostly me, sometimes Mr. Adams, maybe other counsel, I don't want to speak for them, into this process, which is not, it's a denial of Mr. Williams' right to counsel it is an unsworn witness rule violation. It's a due process violation or fair trial constitutional violation because what it does is it causes the jurors not to look at the lawyers like a conduit of information and an advocate, but now they're racing, racing credibility. And the examples I'm giving is right when we started um, this case, the prosecutor making an opening statement for the state put up an exhibit that was seen by the jurors. It was up. That's how I knew to object to it in violation of the court's order to share all PowerPoints or exhibits that are going to be shown in opening statement. Um, it says Brian Steele represented wrongly Mr. Ryan and Mr. Blaylock on appeal. Currently, uh, the court, I made a motion for mis mistrial. The court denied it, but made the prosecution go back and redo and share their um, demonstrative and opening statement. There was a recent comment by the Honorable Mr. on Mr. Adams saying that this, what Mr. Adams said on cross, that these drugs were stolen unbeknownst to Mr. Williams and he was paying back the stolen property to Ms. Bennett and the lawyer for the prosecution announced in front of the jurors that that's not true, meaning Mr. Adams is not being truthful and there's no witness to state that. Um, there has been constant, did you interview with Brian Steele? Did you speak with Keith Adams? Which is what we're supposed to do, but the jurors don't know that. The court's never instructed, although I've asked that that, that is the proper protocol for a lawyer representing a person, God forbid, charged with a crime. There was Trontavia Stevens, did Brian Steele meet with you at the jail? I've, I've never represented Mr. Stevens. I didn't even remember ever meeting with at the jail, there's a jail meeting and then asked what was that about, um, which was nothing. He was asking about a probation revocation, but it looks sinister. The court allowed that over objection. Well, it, um, goes, to it goes to the witness's potential bias or motive to misrepresent. For example, if they talk to you, if either, if, if, if a witness for anybody talks to the proponent and won't talk to the other side, that's a weight issue that the jury can decide. So. Of course, I'll give the jury an instruction as to witness credibility and everything, but so. That, that meeting with Mr. Stevens, point. I don't know if you realize this, 
It was in 2021, according to what the state gave me after he had left the scene. They couldn't pull up because Odyssey was down. They said they didn't have any notes of it and what they didn't remember what date. That's before this case ever occurred. That doesn't go to bias. That's just trying to impugn a lawyer and inject a lawyer. Same thing with um, did, did Brian Steele stop the tape recording in front of you from Mr. Bean, which is outrageous. No evidence of it whatsoever. Whatsoever. Um, now, there's... remember what you all say is not evidence. I'm going to give the jury instruction on that. So, I think we've kind of covered this stuff already, Mr. Steele. So, to the extent that um, I mean, I think it, some of it's premature in the sense that, in the sense of what I'll instruct the jury on and what they'll, how they, how they're to consider it. But you've made this issue before, so. But you don't do it. How's my interview with Detective Kirkman? You should listen to it. It's about ten minutes. How's that coming into? So I'm, how's that coming into evidence? I'm sorry. Why does that come into evidence? I don't know. That has a chilling effect on a lawyer's work. I don't know. I'll ask Miss Love in just a second. Well, that's what my motion did. In addition that's to that, 40, is that Wayne's 45 or Wayne's 46? They're combined. It's 40. It's in 45, but they're both targeting these new exhibits. Most of them, some of them, were never served in discovery at all. There's new witness on that was never on the witness list in April. I, I, I mark it out to try to make everybody. And I heard what the prosecutor said that she needs more time. I don't, I'm not trying to argue it. I just want to alert the court because we want to. You want to. We all want to streamline the case not waste time. So I know that if Detective Kirkman's called, you're going to say to me rightly, why don't you raise this before? I'm raising it. I'm alerting the court. I put it in writing as well. Well, when did you interview Kirkman? January 2024. Okay, well then, it's April the 8th of, 20, of 2024, almost three months ago. Yeah, what, I don't understand the question. I, I don't understand your inquiry. I mean, you had three months. Why not put it in a, in a motion at that point in time and let me hear it before then? Oh, I see what you're saying. You're, I'm not explaining myself well. I did not know that Detective Kirkman recorded me. I don't care he recorded me, but I did not know. It was not served in discovery. It was not given to us until this past Thursday, and it's okay. the last exhibit. I understand. Out of, I understand. Sir. So, you know, I raised it as soon as I was put on notice of it. So I hope that clears yes, up, that clears that up. Your question. Um, and also, you know, judge, it just goes to, and you say, I raise it before you'll give instructions. Lawyers are not supposed to be sitting here and be made, made, um, part of the case. That's why. And I know you limited me to say, Hey, I read everything. I got, you know, what you put in writing about the unsworn witness motion. We argued last week. So I respect the court. And I argued, you said, tell me what there is that cannot substitute another witness to testify to it. But the truth is, and, and my motion went to, and I know you read it, I know you got it, but the case law isn't, oh, can another witness, it's injecting the lawyer into the proceedings. So the jurors have to, have to now not only say, what did the lawyer's information bring out, but what do I think of that lawyer? What do I think of the lawyer's believability? And I know you didn't want to hear that. I didn't do it in an oral argument. I know it's all preserved in writing. But that's what happened here, and that's what the state is doing by injecting constantly, like a Mr. Adams asked a question that's untruthful. You don't, you can't do that. That's not an objection. That that is that is, in that is trying to cut the legs out from the lawyer and putting your own spin on it. Same thing with everything that um, I mentioned, um, and I'm, I'm not saying I mentioned everything. I'm just giving examples. So I don't want any more of lawyers being involved in the case because it's really distasteful under the Constitution because it denies it's about Mr. Williams receiving a fair trial. It's not about him having his lawyer go back and the jurors say, oh, well, I don't believe the lawyer, so therefore I'm going to rule against Mr. Williams. Or I believe the lawyer, and therefore I'm going to rule with Mr. Williams. That, that credibility determination should not be made. And it's been put in issue directly by the prosecution being an unsworn witness regardless of another witness being able to take the mantle of the witness stand. Um, it's, it's injecting, I did this, you told me this. That's why all of the cases renouncing said, don't do it. 
especially if you're the prosecutor. Anyway, I just want to highlight what I'm doing. So the court, a uh, happy judge, I think the quote is, is an oh, informed a judge. A forewarned judge is a happy judge. Okay, well. A happier judge. Okay, well, we, you know, I'm trying to, uh, to heed the cry. But anyway, that's the issues. All right, thank you, sir. No, thank you. All right, Ms. Lover, Ms. Um, Hilton. Judge, I'll take it. Go ahead. <laughs> Again, Your Honor, What's the I purpose that of this the, is of the, premature. Of the tape of, of Kirkland, um, Your Honor, Steele. what I did and what I informed the court and the parties that I would be doing was to provide all of the possible exhibits. And I just want to also uh, supplement that with the fact that I did send a link to a video that I didn't include in the PowerPoint, but that is also potentially an exhibit. These are potential exhibits, Your Honor, as the court said, a forewarned judge is a happy judge, so we sent them the potential universe of exhibits that we anticipated needing to use for any reason, uh, impeachment, any reason, so that they cannot say we did not know. We don't have them numbered as exhibit numbers because we don't know if we're even going to need to put them in. But as it relates to the interview that Mr. Steele conducted of Investigator Kirkman, uh, Mr. Steele himself conducted that interview, and we knew nothing of it. Investigator Kirkman told us just previously to him being called in last week um, or week before that he recorded it. And so we served it on them because he recorded it and gave it to us, so we gave it to him. It's a statement of a witness, albeit a statement he made to Mr. Steele. So I think that this entire motion in limine is a bit premature. Um, one, we've just seen it, but two, we've not tendered any of these items. This is just a list that we can say, hey, you've seen it, it's on slide A, B, C, or D, so that we can facilitate the smooth execution of the trial as it relates to the notion that it somehow makes Mr. Steele a witness in the That's case. That's what I was gonna ask you. you gonna, are you gonna ask Judge, Detective Kirkland anything about this particular interview? If you're not, then it's not, it's not a discussion. I have no have. idea what they're gonna say to Detective Kirkman. I have no idea whether Detective Kirkman says something different than what he says in the interview. In that instance, it may be necessary to put Detective Kirkman's words um, in. And I don't know, it may even be necessary to complete them with Mr. Steele's, but that doesn't make Mr. Steele a witness. Mr. Steele stating that did not happen from his seat during my examination of a witness makes Mr. Steele a witness. And he did that twice in response. Remember what lawyers say is not evidence. So. Exactly, Your Honor. And so anyway, and so that's, still. That's the point. Anything that we're else? Making. And anything else, we'd ask to be allowed the opportunity to at least read the motion in Lemony. Um, but as it relates to the it's PowerPoint. Not it's not very long. Okay. All right. Anyways, uh, um, is your witness here, Ms. Uh, Bennett here? One of them will be here in a few minutes because we've already had one on the way. All right. She's not here. But I did alert the court as to Thank you. Thank you, madam. Hey, Wes, can we get the camera off? Say again? Let me ask the to do it. 
Thank you, Father. Yeah. Okay. She's going straight towards me. No, no, it's ringing now. She's supposed to be bringing me down some water, so. Hey, you downstairs? No, no, no. Before you come, I need you to turn the camera off. Um, it's the one uh, PTZ1. It's showing the jewelry. Yeah, it's going to be showing the jewelry. You can see me leaning across the witness stand now. There you go. It's dead. Come on. Come on. Yeah, that's good. Right there. Thank you. All right. <coughs> She took care of it, Wes. Thank you. Who is this from? Dane Husky? Dane Husky. Folks, we're just going to recess in place, okay? Well, hold on. We don't have a court reporter, so can we just wait a second? All right.
All right, Sergeant Ingram, all our jurors present? Yes, sir. All right, sound our jurors, please. Oh, hold on. Wait before I do that. Um, is Ms. Bennett? Yes, she's here. Okay, let's go ahead and bring Ms. Bennett back in, please. Madam, do you know you're not, Madam camera person? You know you're not supposed, okay, all right. Come on up, ma'am. All right, sorry, name, summon our jurors, please. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. All right, thank you, Sergeant Ingram. All right, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, welcome back and good morning. Good morning. All right. Um, without further delay, we're going to continue with the presentation of the state's case. Uh, Ms. Bennett, welcome back, and you're still under oath, okay? Okay. All right. And you'll need to speak into the microphone, please. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Bennett. Ms. Bennett, when we last spoke on March the 29th, I asked you a series of questions regarding your meeting on February the 9th of 2024 with Lieutenant Hamilton. Do you recall those questions? Or some of them, at least? No. Nah. Ms. Bennett, I'm going to show you what has been already marked and admitted as State's Exhibit 34. Alpha Alpha. And ask you if you recall us talking about the messages that are in 34 Alpha Alpha. Yes. So if you need to refresh your memory with anything as it relates to 34 Alpha Alpha, would you let me know? Okay. Okay. So Ms. Bennett, um, the last thing that I asked you on Friday, March the 29th was um, on February the 9th, around 6.06 .06 p.m., you received a message from Lieutenant Hamilton stating that it was good seeing you and meeting your board. Enjoy the night. Is that accurate? I believe page four of the document you have in your hand. Yes. All right. Now, as we go along, would you please tell me if you recall messages? that either were sent or received to you or by you that you don't see reflected in here. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. And February the 9th was a date that occurred after you had already 
get Tom and Maggie in the courtroom or in the hallway outside the courtroom, right? Yes. Okay. And when you met Lieutenant Hamilton, Lieutenant Hamilton was accompanied by ADA Christian Atkins during the time that you all spent talking. Is that correct? Repeat it. When you spoke with Lieutenant Hamilton, mm -hmm. he was accompanied by ADA Christian Atkins as well as your boys. Is that correct? Later. And would that be about five or ten minutes later after you had gotten there? Fifteen. Fifteen minutes? Ma'am? Fifteen. Okay. And that's fifteen minutes? You yes. there for about fifteen minutes. Now, and that was meeting at the restaurant that you asked him to meet you at, as opposed to the coffee shop you all were initially supposed to meet at, correct? Mm -hmm. A standing objection. Let me rephrase this. Were you all supposed to meet at a restaurant, I'm sorry, at a coffee shop prior to your deciding or writing the question, can you meet me at the restaurant? Both. And were you all supposed to meet at that coffee shop about two hours before you sent Lieutenant Hamilton the text, can you meet me at the restaurant? Mm, yes. And did you ever show up at the coffee shop? No. Were you aware that, that people were waiting for you at the coffee shop? Yeah, he was. Were you aware that other persons with the district attorney's office were waiting for you? I'm going to object to the No, they weren't. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll stand in judgment. Were you told that other people were waiting for you as well? I stand as to form. Have you met Chief Assistant Chief Investigator Mike Green? Who? Mike Green. I don't recall who that is. But you have met ADA Christian Atkins, correct? This him? Yes. Have you yes. met him? Yes. And he was the young man who met with you at the restaurant with Lieutenant Hamilton, is that correct? <laughs> yes. Was there any reason that you wanted to meet at the restaurant versus the coffee shop that you had told them you would meet at earlier? No, I wasn't going to the coffee shop because when I talked to him, I told him I didn't drink coffee. We always um, made plans to go to the restaurant. And that was before or after the two hour delay? Before. Did you tell him you were going to be two hours late? No, I was trying not to show up. Did you know that ADA Christian Atkins was going to be joining you all at the restaurant? No. <clears throat> and when you got to the restaurant and ADA Christian Atkins spoke with you, did you all speak at an adjoining table to the one where Lieutenant Hamilton sat with your sons? Yeah, we had um, set at a different table. After Lieutenant Hamilton uh, met with you, you all made plans to meet on Sunday at 9.30 a.m., didn't you? Mm, yes. Okay. And that was to speak with ADA Christian Atkins and Lieutenant Hamilton again, wasn't it? I don't, I'm not sure. When you say you're not sure, tell the jury what it is, which part of it you're not sure about. I'm not sure if um, I'm supposed to meet with him. Do Atkins. You, do you recall speaking about meeting with him, with Lieutenant Hampton, before you all left the restaurant? No, I talked to Atkins separate from Lieutenant Hampton. As you all got ready to depart ways, you and members of the DA's office. Do you not recall speaking with I'm an objective anyone? I stand, I stand objection. Did you speak with anyone about meeting 
at 185 Central Avenue the following Sunday at 9.30 a.m. No. Did you show up at 185 Central Avenue, the courthouse, on Sunday at 9.30 a.m.? No. On Saturday, February the 10th, at 9.11 p.m., did you receive a text message from Lieutenant Hamilton asking you again, where am I meeting you at 8.30? Yes. And on Sunday, February the 11th, did you get a text message from Lieutenant Hamilton saying, can I get an 8.30 a.m. location to meet? Yes. Am I accurate that you did not meet with any other members of the district attorney's office on either February the 10th or February the 11th? Yes. Is it accurate that you told members of the DA's office that you had church and that you set the schedule for the times y'all were supposed to meet? Yes. Is it accurate that on February the 22nd, you received a text message from Lieutenant Hamilton saying checking on you? Yes. And is it accurate that on March the 13th, you received a text message from Lieutenant Hamilton saying, hey, call me please, ma'am? Yes. Did you receive a text message um, from Lieutenant Hamilton saying, good morning, tell me a good time to call you for about 10 minutes? I know you have some place to go today. And did you receive that on March the 18th at 7.34 a.m.? Yes. Did you receive another text message from Lieutenant Hamilton on March the 20th saying, I need you to call me. We need to meet with you tomorrow. Yes. Did you understand the we to be Lieutenant Hamilton and 88 Atkins? <clears throat> no. Who did you understand the we to be? I don't know. Did you receive a text message from Lieutenant Hamilton on March 20th at 6.43 p.m. saying, reminder, tomorrow at 1 p.m. Let me know when you get here. Yes. On Sunday, March the 24th at 8.22 p.m., did you get a message from Lieutenant Hamilton saying, hey, I've been guaranteed you'll be the first up Tuesday. Please arrive between 8 and 8.30 at 185 Central Avenue outside Courtroom 1C. Please let me know when you arrive. Yes. And on Tuesday, March the 26th at 8.21 a.m., did you get a message from Lieutenant Hamilton saying, good morning, are you here? Yes. And on Tuesday, March 26, 8.41 a.m., did you receive a message from Lieutenant Hamilton saying, I'm going to need you to respond, Miss Bennett. You are the day's first witness. Yes. And did you receive... A text message from Lieutenant Hamilton on Tuesday, March 26th at 9.11 a.m. saying, we do not want to have the judge sign a material witness warrant for you. You don't need that headache. I know you said you don't care, but again, don't need that headache. We're about to start soon. I need you to reply back ASAP. Did you receive that text message? Yes. Do you recall receiving a telephone call the night before that on Monday confirming with Lieutenant Hamilton and ADA Atkins 
that you would be at court at 8.30 a.m. on Tuesday, March the 26th? No. You do not recall getting that phone call? No. Do you recall responding uh, to Lieutenant Hamilton's text message from 9-11 a.m. saying we don't want to have the judge sign a material witness warrant for you? Do you recall responding <coughs> to him not until 8.06 p.m. on Tuesday, March the 26th? Yes. Do you recall telling him, well, I was in an accident. I'm just now leaving the hospital. Like I said, I don't give a fuck if they lock me up. What that going to do? Shit. So you can tell, so you can get the judge to call me too, because they're about to see some more of their attorney be on the news or in jail too for sexual harassment. Please do. Yes. Okay. Miss Bennett, is there any text message that you sent or received that is not reflected in this exhibit? I'm not sure, but one thing I do know is the text messages on this paper that you're showing me, they from two different phones, and you know that too. Thank you for pointing that out for the jury. So tell the jury the last four digits of the phone numbers from the first set of text messages and the last four digits of your phone number for the last set of text messages. Um, the last ones... When he texts me, to my court, I think that's uh, 6024. And the first set? 4983. And Ms. Bennett, is it fair to say that over the years you have consistently carried more than one cell phone? No. Is it your testimony that this time... This period of time is the only time that you have ever carried more than one cell phone. Yeah, my phone 983 number went out, and I told him that I wasn't going to have that phone. So that's when I had the 6024. That's when he would text in the call. Did you still have the 4983 telephone? No, it was broken. Had you given it to someone else, or did you still have the phone itself? It was broken. It was broken. Like, yeah, it was my phone. It was broken. No. Miss Bennett, when did you first mention that? Over the phone. To whom? Him. What did you say to him? I can't recall our conversation. You don't have to recall it verbatim. What did you say? Generally. That's what I'm saying. I can't recall. I don't remember what I said to him. It, it, I been here and said this. Like, it wasn't through a text message or something over the phone. <coughs> it been happening in a while. Yeah. Yeah, I'll follow her. And Ms. Bennett, to be clear, your assertion about harassment was not in any way connected to an allegation regarding your home being shot up in 2013, was it? Repeat it. Your assertion and allegation about harassment had nothing to do with a report from 2013 that your home had gotten shot up. No, I've been, I've been saying that I was being harassed. I was saying that to um, Mr. Long as well. If you go back to the other text message too, if, if that's what you're talking about. Have I been saying it? Yeah. Were you saying it in 2013? I don't know what I was saying in 2013. Did you know I didn't know you. Of us in 2013? No. 
So is it fair to say then that in 2013, there was no Lieutenant Hamilton doing anything, following, harassing, texting, or anything to you? No. And is it fair to say that there have been no communication between you and any of the current staff of the district attorney's office in 2013 when your home had gotten shot? Not that I recall. And by not that you recall, you mean no, you had not gotten any or had any kind of communication between any of them. I don't think so. Mr. Adams asked you on cross-examination <coughs> whether um, about a person named Buck Buck. Were you familiar with Buck Buck? No. Do you recall getting on February the 6th, Tuesday, February the 6th, at 5? 5.46 p.m., a voice text from Lieutenant Hamilton. Yes. Do you recall what that voice text said? I think it was some stating to court, if I'm mistaken, because I had talked to him on the phone. Stated to court. Saying come to court? No, it was something about court. About court? Mm-hmm. Did you get any other voice texts from Lieutenant Hamilton that are not reflected on this document? I'm not sure. <laughs> Would you recall if you did? I think I received, I know I received more than one, but I don't see them, but I think they were still stayed into court. They were still talking about court? Yeah, I think so. And which phone were they sent on? Uh, phone 983. And since you still have that phone, uh, would you be able to find that voice text on that phone? Mm, probably not. Why not? No, I don't, I'm not sure. I should, if it was sent at this time. And when you're saying at this time, are you referring to the voice text sent on February the 6th at 5.46 p.m.? Yes. So if there were any others, would they also be on that phone? Yes. And if there are any others, would you let us know at some later time? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, the state would like to play what we will label as State's Exhibit 34 Alpha Alpha Bravo, which has already been tendered as a part of state, uh, State's Exhibit 34 Alpha Alpha, which is the voice text that is referenced in this exhibit. Uh, any objection to State's uh, 34 is it Alpha Alpha? <coughs> Your Honor, we tendered it. Um, at the prompting. Okay. Your Honor. Who's, who's, uh, whose phone call was it? Your Honor, it was uh, Lieutenant Hamilton's phone call that Mr. Adams said they had no objection. I'm objecting to the hearsay. We tendered it. Now. And the it was admitted as evidence. I'm sorry. If I make the honors. The exhibit may be in, but it, is still, it still has hearsay within it, which is not admissible. He's, he's correct. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll sustain the objection. Point. Mr. 
Ms. Bennett, while we were speaking earlier, we, you talked about your um, apartment, 980 Confederate Avenue, apartment D, facing Confederate Avenue. Did I get that correct or am I wrong? <coughs> yes. And so the name of the apartments that you lived in was Trestle Tree Apartments, is that right? Yes. And Trestle Tree Apartments had going through the center of it in the section that you lived in, Confederate Court, is that accurate? Yes. And Confederate Avenue was the main street that was perpendicular to Confederate Court, is that accurate? Yes. Now, when you talked about the building being shot, in 2013, is it accurate that no bullet holes went through your front door? I don't recall none going through my front door. Is it accurate that the bullet hole that went through your window came from the Confederate court side of the street? It could have. Say that again? It could have. Could not or could? Couldn't. Tell me why. My building sit on the street on Confederate Ave. Confederate Court, when you turn in, that means they have to go through three, four, five buildings to get to that building. Ms. Bennett, I'm It's finished. impossible. Okay. Ms. Bennett, do you remember um, a building 988 Confederate Court to the immediate right of 980 Confederate Avenue when you lived in those apartments? Building who? 988 Confederate Avenue. Now, I don't know what building next to me, to my right. I don't know the address. All right. I'm going to show you what I will label as State's Exhibit um, 44A. A, that is 44 Alpha Alpha, 45 Alpha Alpha, and 46 Alpha Alpha. Your Honor, these are demonstratives that um, we have provided in the exhibit list that we have provided to the defense and the court, and they are on slides. Uh, Councils, any objections? They are states? on slides 41, 42, 40. and 43. Any objections? States 44 alpha, 45 alpha, 46 yes. alpha. Yes, Judge, I've got a slide. We're trying to see what those correspond sure. to. Sure. Yes. Any objection, sir? No, sir. All right, states 44, alpha, alpha, 45, alpha, alpha, and 46, alpha, alpha, are admitted, may be shown to the witness or published as you see fit. Yeah, we hadn't tendered them yet. We were actually just approaching the witness to ask if she recognized them. He's already, he's already said that, that they're admitted now. Okay. So. Right. Ms. Bennett, do you recognize the area shown on the Google Maps images in 44, alpha, alpha, Yes. 45 Alpha Alpha. <coughs> They're like the same thing. And 46 Alpha Alpha. And this night, if you would 
I don't know which one that is. I said, I don't know which one that is. Miss Knight, would you please place on the screen 40, 4, 45, and 46 alpha alpha in turn? Miss Bennett, since you said that you do recognize 44 alpha alpha, would you agree with me? That 44 Alpha Alpha is the entrance to Trestle Tree Apartments. Um, yes. Okay. And the building on the corner of what is now Trestle Tree Court and United Avenue is building 988. Isn't that correct? Which one? Because I don't know. The building on the corner here. That's building 988, isn't it? I don't know. Okay. Let's look at space exhibit 45 Alpha Alpha. And Ms. Snyder, if you could just zoom in. Are you able to better see? <coughs> That's why I still can't see the numbers. Okay. Let's look at uh, and take attention to the building to the left of the building on the corner where the hand is. You see that bush on the corner of the building to the left? Miss Knight, would you put the hand over the bush on the corner of the, no ma'am, to the left of the, yes. You see that bush? Yes. Okay. Miss Knight, would you zoom in on that bush? Close as you can. All right. And now go to space exhibit 46 Alpha Alpha. And would you zoom in on the numbers behind that bush in space exhibit 46 Alpha Alpha? Ms. Bennett, would you agree with me that in 46 Alpha Alpha, your building is reflected as being next to building 988? No. Can you see that this is building 980 or not? No. You cannot? No. Okay. And in states exhibit 45 Alpha Alpha. Would you zoom in on the street signs? Miss Bennett, can you see, and if you need to go over a little bit more, can you see that one is Confederate um, going in one direction and one is Confederate going in towards stressful tree? Yes. Okay. Ms. Bennett, do you recall any part of what um, your building looks like in 2013? No. But you do remember that it was 980 Confederate. F, not correct. Okay. Yeah. And showing me once more space exhibit one alpha alpha. Do you recognize Stacey Exhibit 1 Alpha Alpha as 9E Confederate Ave? No. You don't recognize it? You need some more time to look at it? You're still holding it. Don't need any more time. You just don't recognize it. Okay. 
Ms. Bennett, did you ever um, provide any hospital information to any member of the district attorney's office? No. Is there any reason that you did not provide any information when you didn't appear in court as you were summoned to do on March the 26th? It wasn't asked. Did you call them and let them know before 9 p.m. that you had been hospitalized and couldn't make it? I don't recall the time. When you say you don't recall the time, what do you mean? I don't know what time it was when I let him know. Did you call them at any time while you were in the hospital? No. What time did you get to the hospital? I'm not sure. What hospital did you go to? Uh, uh, Pima. Do you have any records or anything like that showing that you were at Pima? Yes. Okay. And where are they? They're not here. Did you offer them to the officers who came to arrest you? for not appearing in court on March the 26th? No, they didn't ask me none of that. Did they tell you why you were being arrested? Uh, no, they were just being very aggressive. They were being very aggressive? Yeah. How were they being very aggressive? Because when I um, let them in, the lady like was trying to like how she was holding me and stuff, and I ain't have on no clothes, and I kept asking them, can I put my clothes on? And um, it was like me in the room and stuff when I was um, trying to get dressed. And I kept uh, asking her respectfully, like, so you just gonna let him stand right there and look at me. But um, she was just being a, a butthole, like, but that had Clay County here. And then when I um, came out, I kept um, discussing, asking her, like, what I'm um, um, being detained for. She kept just saying, you got a warrant. And I kept saying, for what? She just said, you got a warrant. And I said, for what? She said, you got a warrant. And she kept saying the same thing. And they would never show me anything. Like, they ain't show me nothing, like no paper, nothing on the phone. And that's when I came out and seen um, Hamilton. And they were just smiling and high-fiving and stuff like that. And did you ever inquire with anyone what you were supposed to do when you didn't show up to court on March? And no one told me nothing. I'm sorry, say that again. No one told me nothing. Did you provide anyone with anything? No one asked me to. Did you go to the hospital on March the 26th, the morning you were supposed to appear in court? Yes. What kind of accident did you have? It wasn't me. It was a family member. It was a family matter. So it was not you? No. So you were not harmed? No. So was there anything keeping you from reaching out to any member of the DA's office to say, I cannot come to court? I did reach out. Okay. How? By phone. When? Was it before or after court was over that day? I don't know if court was over. I don't know what time it was, but I let them know. And then the next day, I was detained. Now, did you reach out to the court or to anyone besides whomever it is that you say you reached out to? No, I don't know how to reach out to the court. And how did you reach out to a member of the DA's office to say you wanted to do that? If I knew how to reach out to the court, when I've been sent him that text, when I said I wanted to call the judge, I would have called him, but I didn't know who the judge was or who to reach out to. So it was only Lieutenant Hamilton because he the only person that he, I supposed to talk to. At least that's what he told me. You had my number. Did you reach out to me? And I don't have your number anymore. Okay. Now... The text message that you sent at 9 o'clock p.m. on March the 26th to Lieutenant Hamilton at 8.06 p.m. saying, well, I was in an accident. I'm just now leaving the hospital. That was the first time you mentioned being in an accident, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. And that was 8.06 p.m., correct? I don't know what time. If I show you the exhibit, will it refresh your memory? 
Yes, I say eight of six. Eight of six p.m. Yes. On March the But it wasn't you that was in the accident, as you said in your text, correct? I didn't say it on my text, but yeah. Would you read your text for the jury? They say, well, I was in an accident. I'm just not leaving the hospital. Like I said, I don't give a fuck if they lock me up. So you can. So can you get the judge to call me? Because uh, can you get the judge to call me? Because um, they about to see um, more of their attorneys on the news or in jail for sex harassment. Please do. Now, what attorney are you talking about? Him. You knew he was not an attorney, correct? You said that I know he was not an attorney? Correct. I'm not sure what he is. You have been calling him Lieutenant Hamilton, correct? No. What have you been calling him? Attorney. That's what I thought he was. You didn't recall hearing or reading his text that says this is Lieutenant Hamilton? No. When was the last or the next time that he had any interaction whatsoever with Jeffrey Williams? You said what? After 2013. When was the last time that you had any interaction with Jeffrey Williams? I can't recall. In 2013, um, you said that he and your child's father were friends? Yes. Were they both affiliated with sex money murder? I can't tell you that they can. Were you affiliated with sex money murder? No. Did you ever call yourself or answer to the title first lady? No. Did you ever go by the title Lady L V? No. I'm going to I'm going to show you uh, what we'll mark as space exhibit fifty three and it is on slide Uh, actually, it's the one provided to the court and the defense um, prior to the provision of the exhibit PowerPoint. So it says 53? Yes, Your Honor. You can.
approach the witness. You may. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm showing you um, who's been at the initial Sounders talk. States Exhibit 53. Do you recognize the persons reflected in States Exhibit 53? Specifically at 724. Do you recognize the persons reflected in Stacey Exhibit 53? Yes. And how do you recognize them? It's me. Okay. And you recognize the person you are in that video with? Yes. Okay. Is this a fair and accurate representation of the people and places depicted in this video? Say what? Is this a fair and accurate? Is this a fair and accurate depiction of the people and places depicted in this video? Yes. Your Honor, the state tender states exhibit 53 is evidence. Any further objection to the state's 53 counsels? Great objection, Your Honor. All right, so noted. Um, well, it would say 53 would be admitted over objection and be published as you see. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that, Your Honor. No. Okay, yes, it can be shown. Alpha Alpha, my apologies. J. Jay. Jay, is he also called Bloody J? Yeah. All right. Would you fast forward to seven minutes and approximately 30 seconds? Me and Jay. And what is the caption underneath your image? Uh, 
It say the real lady Evie. And isn't it true that that is your that was a social media handle that you used? And I had so many um uh, so social media like so many people had fake pages on me, so I know there wasn't one of them though. I'm sorry. I said I had so many social media people make fake pages of me, and they probably were one of them. Would you Hand gestures. And what were those hand gestures meant to signify? I'm not sure. Miss Knight, would you please back up about three seconds and freeze it on the hand gestures where she had both hands up? A bird. A bird? Yes. What kind of bird? I'm not, you know, you know, it had to be a green bird, red bird, a yellow bird, just a bird. Why did you put up uh, your fingers together to signify a bird in this moment? Why? Well, I can't recall. Miss Bennett, do you have a five point star tattoo on your person? Yes. What is it meant to signify? My um father, fifth child. And is that five point star red? And green. I'm sorry? And green. Which part is red? The outer. Continue. The outer. Do I know what bird game is? Mm -mm. Have you ever had any affiliation with Bird Gang? Mm -mm. Please continue. The light, baby. Zone three. Zone three? Yes. It was not a B? No. Go ahead. Yes. Rewind it. What is that? It say Lady LV for some. I think you want to say. Is there a five next to the A in that last word? Yes. What? Why is there a five and not a letter there? I'm not sure. Agree that that's your shirt, right? Yes, it gave it to me. And you're wearing a shirt called Lady LB. Yes. How we do? Hey, this is. Hey man, what's up, my black frog too, man? Shout out, frog. Hey, this is not a movie. What you say, frog? This is what. This is actually what goes on. Hey, oh, what? What's your camera shot, nigga? What's black? Oh, y'all ain't fucking with me. I got the camera. Who is the 
person in the video with you now, at eight minutes in, to your immediate left? Can okay, you show the face? Mm -hmm. Is that not Micah Anderson? Yes. Your child's father? Yes. Did you not recognize him from behind? Mm -mm. Continue. What? What's your camera shot, nigga? What's crack? Are y'all ready to fuck me because I got the camera? What's crack? In the hood, nigga, what's crack? Show me love. A whole lot, a whole lot, man. We're in the third. First night. Damn. One more time, man. Hey man, my brother, man, you know. Yes. Um. I sustain it. At, uh, you can lay foundation down if you want to. Your Honor, are, are we allowed to continue <coughs> the portion that we have just introduced that she says that she, it's her? Not until you lay some more foundation. Okay. Um, Ms. Bennett, do you recognize these people in this video? Yes. And again, are these fair and accurate reflections of a day and time where you all were together and shooting this video? Yes, I remember when. Okay. Say that again. And, yes, I don't remember when. And were um, the words that we hear coming out of your mouth words that you actually spoke? Yes. Okay. Um, John, may we play the portion of Ms. Bennett and her speaking? John, I would still pose an objection to the hearsay of other individuals speaking that does not lay foundation to the we're not. Hindering what other people are saying. I'll rule the objection. You can play it. Hey, man. A handshake. What type of handshake? I don't know. I just did what everybody else did. Does this signify uh, sex, money, murder in any way? I'm not sure. And is it your testimony that you don't know what sex money murder is? Yes, I heard of it. And is it your testimony that you heard of it where? In the streets. You heard of it in this group that you're with, right? Yes. And in fact, you refer to Pistol Pete in this video, don't you? I'm not sure. You know who Pistol Pete is, right? No. So if you're referring to Pistol Pete, do you know who you'd be referring to? No, you said I'm referring to him. I don't know who he is. My brother, man, you know. Hey, boy. Go, go, man, you know. Foster, Foster, Joey. Flat down the I ain't come out of one. Yeah, man. We out here, man. You know what I mean? Be that house. Somebody better tell them about the house. And Ms. Bennett, when I asked you earlier on direct uh, whether Donovan Thomas was ABG, is this the same ABG that you were referring to? What you mean? Is this the same? Was the ABG reflected in the articles of clothing in this video the same ABG that Donovan Thomas was a member of? Mm -mm. Yes. Black Lana, man. Big and rap, man. Will you beat me out?
Can you try that fuck shit? Get on up. Get on right there at all times. I'm gonna get ready to We're right there at all times. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know. This shit big right? Miss Dad, do you recognize the person? Could you back up just a little bit? To the far left of the screen. Next to Jack. No. Had you ever seen him before that day? I'm not sure. Isn't he the person you're in a photograph with that has already been admitted as evidence? Not that I know of. Would you continue to play the film? This shit bigger, I throw all this shit out on the back. I can't even watch this, man. Brother Jay, man, I mean, what was that, homie? Nah, I mean, this what it gonna be like, baby. Man, for real. It's a little part, man. It's a little part, man. I got a little part, man. Reach your goons from Daisy Brown. Reach. Hey, Reach. And still, you don't recognize the person. You didn't recognize the person with the red bandana on that I was asking about. No, they were covered up, no. Okay. Have you heard the name Trontavia Stevens? No. Have you heard the name Kick or Slug? No. <clears throat> Just one moment. Do you know? You never told anyone to take that handle down um, at the Real Lady B that was on this video, did you? No, I ain't even ever look at it. And do you know approximately when it was that that video? No. Was shot. Would it have been before 2015? I'm not sure. Did you say Ladies and gentlemen, you want to take five minutes before we in crowd? Okay. We're going to take a five-minute comfort break, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, continue with the witness examination at that time. We're in recess.
lot of questions and you've been shown text messages between you and various members of the district attorney's office. Is that true? Yes. And, and you recognize some of those text messages that you, was, that you were shown, correct? Yes. Um, in fact, I'm going to draw your attention to just a couple of them and ask you about those text messages and your testimony, okay? Okay. Okay, I'm going to start. Uh, Ms. Knight, if you'd be kind enough to put up uh, what's been marked as State's Exhibit 35A, A, B, Alpha, Alpha, Bravo. All right, tell you what, may I approach the witness, Judge? You may, sir. All right, thank you. I'm going to show you uh, their exhibit, right? 35. 35 Alpha Alpha Bravo. And with the court's permission, if I can stand next to the witness and draw her attention to. Yes, sir, you may. All right. These are the text messages that you were shown earlier. Earlier, is that correct? Yes. All right. Would you agree that these are the text messages between, that purport to be between you and um, Madam Prosecutor, Ms. Love? Yes. Okay. And, and your attention was drawn earlier to um, one, te one text message in particular. Uh, which was dated November 26th of 2023. You remember that? Yes. Yeah. All right. That was the day when, back in November, a number of months ago, when Ms. Love contacted you and indicated that she wanted to talk to you about this 2013 supposed incident, right? Yes. All right. And, and you remember, of course, that throughout November, from November 26th to about um, the end of the year, there were a few text messages between you and Ms. Love. Yes. All right. You responded to a couple of them. Isn't that true? Yes. That's right. I don't know. Um, now, there was a text message in particular uh, somewhere around New Year's. You remember that? Remember this one? Where it says, hi and happy New Year. That message came from Ms. Love? Yes. Talked about hoping you and your boys were having a wonderful day. Yes. Talked about, and Miss Love at that time went on to talk to you about how you were a, quote, wonderful mom to those three boys in case no one else tells you that this year. Remember when she was talking to you in that fashion? Yes. Okay. And, and you remember her telling you those things as she was uh, talking to you about being a witness for the state in this case, right? Yes. That was about January. Is that correct? Yes. Now, you remember that there was a text message um, right around the same time, around New Year's, where Miss Love talked to you about wanting to talk to you sometime this week and that she could come by to you. You remember that? Yes. All right. Um, remember there was a conversation about her having some peas and leftover greens from New Year's and all that. She was talking to you about, you know, uh, about coming by and talking to you and being friendly with you and that sort of thing, right? Yes. Okay. You remember Ms. Love telling you that she wanted to talk to you about questions she anticipated the defense would ask you, would try to get out of you, how you should view those questions you remember those, that, that being said in that, those text messages? Yes. All right. Um, and in fact, in those text messages, she kept telling you um, that she didn't want to, she wanted to make it comfortable for you, right? Yes. She told you that, didn't she? Yes. In fact, she said that she wanted to talk to you. She would make it really brief. She wanted the jury well, I want the jury to see the person I met the other day. She's a wonderful person, and I need them to know it. You remember when she was talking to you like that? Yes. Okay. And after a while, those conversations and the, the, the temperature of those conversations changed, didn't they? Yes. And let's see, that last message that we just talked about where she wanted to, the jury to see the person she met, and what a wonderful person you were. That was about somewhere in early January, isn't that right? Yes. 
Now, soon after that, and, and we are, today we are in April, April the, uh, the 8th, isn't that right? That's today's date, correct? Yes. All right. Is it fair to say that soon after January, you weren't having a whole lot more conversations with the assistant district attorney, Ms. Love? Yes. You kind of stopped responding to a lot of her text messages, isn't that right? Yes, and she kind of like stopped texting for a while. You were at some point beginning to feel as though you were being harassed by the district attorney's office. Yes. In fact, in conversations with whether it was an assistant district attorney or an investigator, they would ask you questions about 2013, right? Yes. You would continuously tell them, look, I don't remember or I don't know. I don't have nothing to say about that. Is that, that true? Yes. Nonetheless, they kept asking you questions and telling you that they wanted you to come in and testify, right? Yes. Is it fair to say that most of their questions, most, everything that was asked about you, <coughs> geared towards what you could say about Jeffrey Williams? Can you repeat it? Is that what they were asking? Were they trying to see what it is you could, they could get you to say about Jeffrey Williams? Yes. Would Ms. Knight's um, assistance, actually, never mind. Approach witness again, Judge? You may, sir. Thank you. Stage 33, Alpha, Alpha. Let's see. In addition <coughs> to this love, you were also talking to, um, to other investi to investigators in the office, correct? Yes. Talk to Investigator Long, right? Yes. And talk to Investigator Hamilton. Yes. You got to Hamilton in a while, but there was a conversation that you had with an investigator somewhere around February, right? So now we're jumping from January when you're talking to Ms. Love mm -hmm. to February where you're talking to an investigator. And at some point you sent a text message, right? Where you said, okay, I'm about to get a lawyer now because I keep telling y'all I don't have shit to say and y'all keep harassing me and my family, but I'll be there at 930. You remember that? Yes. Okay. So we moved from November um, and you're talking to the DA's office, right? Yes. And by the time February rolls around, right, about two months ago, you're still telling them, listen, I don't have anything to say. I don't have any information for you. Isn't that true? Yes. Let's get Hamilton. At some point, you start having some conversations with Investigator Hamilton. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. States Exhibit 34 Alpha Alpha, please. But if Ms. Knight would be kind enough to go ahead and put that up on the stand for me, on the uh, screen for me, please. Now. Whether you knew him as a investigator or an attorney, what you knew for a fact was that invest was that Hamilton worked with the DA's office. True? Yes, I, I thought he was a um, attorney. I wasn't sure who he was. Okay, but but I mean, certainly you knew that he was calling you and asking you questions and interacting with you on behalf of the district attorney's office. Isn't that right? Yes. And there were times where you would have conversations with him. Um, by phone, right? Yes. And I mean, actually talking on the phone, correct? Yes. There were times when there'd be text messages exchanged, correct? Yes. And um, in regards to your testimony, your testifying, right? Would, would you agree that the manner, your manner of testifying, the way you feel about testifying has something to do with the way the district attorney's office dealt with you? Objection, Dave. I stand a question. You can rephrase, sir. Yes, sir. Um, well, certainly you had conversations with Hamilton, right? Yes. Now, is it fair to say that although we saw these, some, some, and we'll talk about them in a bit, some text messages that were put up on the screen, right? They don't capture all of the interactions between you and Hamilton, right? No. Now, were you imagining it when you said that, uh, you thought that investigator Hamilton was acting like he wanted to date you? 
objection, Your Honor, form of the question. I stand the question. You can rephrase, sir. Yes, sir. Let me pause on Hamilton for a second. I want to go back and ask you something about Ms. Love and your conversations with her. You remember that you were asked questions about um, whether or not you were comfortable talking about this incident. Ms. Love, you remember those questions? Yes. Um, you remember that you said she made you uncomfortable, correct? Yes. She made you feel in your conversations with her like you wanted to harm yourself, true? Yes. Now. Do you remember testifying that at some point um, there was some conversation you had with her about her, quote, getting you some counseling or getting you some help or something like that? Yes. Did, did you ever perceive that the, the counseling that she, you thought she was referring to was her locking you up to bring you in here to testify? Did you ever think that was going to happen? No. I stay in the question. They did lock you up, though, didn't they? Yes. So that you could come in here and testify, right? Yes. Even though you told them, look, I don't have anything to say. I don't remember anything about this, right? Yes. I stay in the question. So you would agree with me that you were talking to this uh, Mr. Hamilton about the same time uh, that you were sending those text messages were going back and forth that we saw early in early February. Is that about right? Yes. Okay. So I want you to do me a favor. Look to look to your left, right, and and I'll I'll reference the screen up top. Now you recognize these as text messages between um, you and this investigator Hamilton, right? Yes. Now. In that first text message, message where he says, GM, now GM is good morning, right? Yes. Good morning, mama. Hope you slept well. Now, is, is that generally how he would communicate with you, how he would address you? Objection page. I stand the question. Did he address you as mama on more than one occasion? Yes. And... If we can go down a bit to the bottom of that page. All right. So on Wednesday, February the 7th, at about 5.48 p.m., he sent you a text message, this investigator for the VA's office, saying, call me one more time, then I'm out your here for the night. you remember that? Yes. Now, how about the next one? That same night, Wednesday, February 7th, 6.45 p.m., where he says, hit me up. If you're bored later, we're not going to talk shop. Remember that text message? Yes. Did you talk to him later on? Yes. Did y'all talk shop? Yes. What do you want to talk about? Going out. Going out? Going out as in walking out the door or going out on a date? A date. And this is February 7th of 2024, this year, when the investigator for the DA's office is supposed to be talking to you about a case, but in fact is calling you, talking to you about going out on a date. Is that true? Yes. Did the fact that this uh, employee of the district attorney's office was trying to date you come into your mind as you're thinking about whether you have to come in here and testify or not? Yes.
you were shown um, earlier one of the exhibits, text messages between you and Mr. Hamilton. And just to be, just to be clear, I asked you a little bit earlier about how many times it is that in these conversations with you, he uh, referred to you as mama. <laughs> Let's see. Tuesday, February 6th, send you a text message, mama, thank you. Mm -hmm. With a fist, a little fist sign, right? Yeah. early in the morning about my good morning hope you slept well mama remember that yes you testified last week um, about the fact that you were having to come meet with the DA's office and that led to you losing your job is that right yes now when uh, Investigator Hamilton told you, don't worry about that. I can help you get another job. Was that in a text message or was that a phone conversation that you had with him? Both. Now, as we move forward into March, right, there was that period of time where you were supposed to come in and testify. Is that right? I think so, yes. And you were in communication with Investigator Hamilton, is that right? Yes. Now, do you remember last week when you were being questioned by the state? The state was asking questions about whether um, you were telling them you didn't want to come in and testify. You remember those questions? Yes. Do you remember the prosecutor asking you whether or not you said to someone, or you text to someone, tell the judge to kiss my ass? But I ain't say that. All right, but you remember, you remember asking that, right? Yeah. Yes. All right, you did she not lied. say that, did you? No, it, it said what I said. I told the judge to call me, not kiss my ass. So, the text message that's um, dated Tuesday, March 26, 806 p.m. that you were asked about earlier and that was put up on the screen, where it says, well, I was in an accident. I'm just now leaving the hospital. Like I said, I don't give a fuck if they lock me up. What that going to do? Shit, so can you get the judge to call me? Those your words? Yes. Because they're about to see some more of their attorneys be on the news or in jail, too, for sexual harassment. Please do. That's your text message, right? Yes. That is verbatim your text message, right? Yes. So when you were asked last week, or when it was suggested that you said, tell the judge to kiss my ass. That is not what you said, is it? No. Objection, Your Honor, as to the form of the question. The question was, when suggested. I'll stay in the question. You can rephrase, sir. Yes, sir. You asked the judge to call you, or you asked the, the investigator to have the judge call you. Is that true? Yes. You did not say, tell the judge he can kiss my ass. True? You had it right there, sir. I did not tell the judge to kiss my ass. I wouldn't have no reason to tell the judge that. I just wanted him to call. You were on. The video that was shown a little while ago. You remember that video, right? You, you were in that video, is that correct? Yes. Okay. I think you were asked earlier um, if you know when that video was. I don't. It was certainly before 2015, right? Yes. If I were to say that was in 2012, would you have any reason to dispute that? I wouldn't be sure. At any of the times when you met with and spoke with anyone from the DA's office uh, in regards to 
coming in here and testify. We ever shown that video and said, hey, we're gonna show you this video so you can help enlighten the jury about this RICO case. Anybody ever show you the video and ask you that? No. Is there anything in any of that video, anything that has anything whatsoever to do with 2013, the 2013 incident you've been asked questions about? No. Is there anything about you wearing red, throwing up whatever kind of signs, or whomever it is you're with in that video that tells us anything about what happened in 2013? No. I stand, I stand questions. So we ask the witness's answer be stricken. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to disregard the witness's answer. And uh, Ms. Benny, if, I, if there's an objection, stop talking. Oh, okay. okay, immediately, and let me rule upon that before you complete, okay? Okay. All right, thank you. Did, um, was the video, was the first time that you saw that, that video uh, when it was played here in court? Yes. First time you were asked any questions about it uh, when it was played here in court? Yes. Did uh, Mr. Hamilton... Uh, ever show you any videos or any photographs at any time that he met with you? No. Did he, Mr. Hamilton or anybody else, um, ever ask you any questions about uh, gang or gang affiliation or anything like that when they met with you? No. Why exactly... Um, you asked a couple questions early, and I want to just jump back to this for a quick second um, about your meeting with Mr. Hamilton and I think uh, Mr. Atkins. You asked, you remember being asked those questions a little while ago? Yes. Okay. Why exactly were you reluctant to, or were you reluctant to meet with uh, folks from the DA's office? Were you? Objection, Atkins. Sustained. All right. Back to uh, 2013. Back in 2013, um, is it your testimony that you do not recall uh, the incident that you've been asked about from 2013? Sustained. Yes. Madam, remember. There's an objection. Stop talking. Okay. If, uh, jury, to disregard the witness's last answer. When you um when you were question, being questioned last week uh, by Miss Love, and you said that the DA lied, what were you referring to? I don't know. Have you, 2013, since 2013, um, let's see, 2013, then in 2015, you went into custody, is that right? Yes. You were in custody for a, a couple years? Yes. Uh, you came out when? Uh, May 2017. One more time? May 2017. 2017? <laughs> yes. You've not been back in since that period of time, right? Yes. Um, the first time that you had a conversation or asked any questions about this 2013 thing was when? I think last year. Last year, 2023? Yes. Are you aware that this 2013 thing that they've been talking about is not even part of this indictment? Objection, Your Honor. I sustain the objection. Do 
you know whether your name is in the indictment anywhere? Yeah, objection. Staying objection. This uh this video, right, that you saw a little earlier. Remember you asked a couple questions about sex money murder? Yes. Sex money murder have anything to do with this incident we're talking about from 2013? No. One moment, please. Yes, sir. When you were um, when you were told you had to come in here and testify, you were assured by the state that your face wouldn't be shown, right? No. Was that your face that was shown in the video that they uh, played a little earlier? Yes. That's all I've got. Any other examination? Councils. All right, anything further? State? Yes. No? Sorry. Is there anything further? Um, yes, Your Honor, just briefly um, regarding the questions asked by Mr. Adams. Probably about four more questions. All right, let's see. Thank you, Judge. Ms. Bennett, you were asked by Mr. Adams about State's Exhibit 34 Alpha Alpha. on February the 7th of 2024 at 6.45 p.m. Mr. Adams, did you keep 34 Alpha Alpha? I think so. It should be available the rest of the time.
zu gehen. The copy of Stacy Sitter 34 Alpha Alpha. And you're agreeing that February 7, 6.45 p.m. is when you receive the text. Hit me up if you're bored later. We're not going to talk shop. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Mr. Adams asked you whether you spoke with Lieutenant Hamilton on the telephone after that. Do you recall that? Yes. Now, as part of State's Exhibit 34 Alpha Alpha, would you agree with me that there are also text met on telephone calls that are reflected from February the 7th of 2024? Yes. Okay. And would you agree with me that, just look off through it, there are two telephone calls, and if you need to look through the rest of the exhibit, feel free to do so, on February the 7th, 2024. And that one is an incoming call at 6.02 p.m. Incoming to you, outgoing from Lieutenant Hamilton. That lasted three seconds. Would you agree with me? It's not indicating whether... Um... The incoming or the outgoing is not that he is going to understand this okay. like a text message. All right. You have both of your phones in your possession, correct? No. Where are they? I don't have them. I'm asking you where they are. Oh, um, my phone, I just have one of them right now. Okay. Where are, where's the other phone? Broke. What? Broken. So when you say broken, um, what do you mean? Help me understand that. It's cracked. So why did you need to get a new number for the cracked phone? Why did I need to get a new number for the yeah. cracked phone? Yeah. When my phone was broken, I couldn't receive calls, uh, send out calls, so I had to get another phone. Okay. So you don't have a um, plan, or is it, why did you have to get a whole other phone for a crack? No, I don't have a plan on it. Okay. So, did anyone ask you to look through either of your phones to look at the messages or the times from that you received or made calls to Lieutenant Hamilton? No, you just showed me that. Okay. And you'd agree with me that the only two calls reflected on this call log are a call at 6.02 p.m. going out from the phone that gave this call log and a call at 6.22 p.m. coming in from your number. Your Honor, I'm, I'm going to object to Basis. Well, mischaracterization um, from a call log is a screenshot. A standing objection. So, Your Honor, I'll... Rephrase my question. Beyond your four questions, let's wrap it up, Miss Lovett. Yes, please. I gotta use the bathroom. Miss Bennett, do you have anything to show that any calls were made between you and Lieutenant Hamilton on February the seventh, other than the six oh two p.m. call for three seconds and the six twenty two p.m. call coming in from you for nine minutes and thirty one seconds? Like I said, I um... don't. I don't know what what this is or which phone it was at the time. I just know you have a screenshot, so I don't know if, if it means him or me. I don't I don't understand. Did you provide anyone with screenshots of your call history? No, I just seen everything because of you. Okay. I never provided nobody with nothing. You you provided everybody with everything. Right. Yes. So did you ever provide anyone anything to contradict anything in here? No, you did. Okay. I didn't provide anything, right? This is the exhibit. You understand that? Okay. Okay. Did you ever provide any? I stand the objection. Miss Bennett, did you ever get, did you, did, did Mr. Adams ever ask you for a call log? No. 
Yeah, oh. burden shifting. Your Honor, it's not uh, burden shifting when the issue has been raised. No, that, 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 Your Honor, may we approach? Oh, uh, Mr. Adams, I'm going to overrule your objection. Mr. S uh, Mr. Uh, Shard, I'm going to overrule your objection. State, don't ask that question ever again. And Ms. Bennett, would you agree with me that the next call between you and Lieutenant Hamilton did not occur until March of 2024, as reflected by these calls on these screenshots? Repeat the question. You want to repeat the question you want me to ask? Would you agree with me that after the two calls on February the 7th, one at 6.02 p.m., one at 6.22 p.m., the next call that you got from Lieutenant Hamilton or made to Lieutenant Hamilton occurred one in February on February the 9th? Which one are you talking about? All of the calls. After okay. February the 7th, the next, there were two calls made on February the 7th, and both of them were before that text message was sent to you by Lieutenant Hamilton. Isn't that correct? I'm not sure. Bless you, Yon. Would you agree with me that the text message from Lieutenant Hamilton was sent to you on February the 7th at 6.45 p.m.? Yes. And the only two calls that were made between you and Lieutenant Hamilton were on 6.02 p.m., that's before the 6.45 text, and 6.22 p.m., before the 6.45 text? Yes. Right. And the next call that Lieutenant Hamilton either received from you or made to you, wasn't made until February the 9th. Would you agree with me on that? I'm going to check, Your Honor, best evidence. <laughs> I'm going to sustain the objection on other grounds. It's been asked and answered. Let's move on. Mr. Slope. And it's fair to say um, that notwithstanding any of this, all of this occurred well after 2013, correct? That's an answer. Let's move on. Thank you, Don. That's all that I have. Anything further? Did the state ever provide you with your, not a screenshot, but phone logs, actual phone records to look at and ask you any questions about phone calls that had been made? Did they ever do that? No. Did they ever provide you with phone records from Investigator Hamilton and ask you to look at those and ask you questions about phone calls that had been made. Did they ever do that? No. That's all. Anything further? No, Your Honor. All right, yes, may, may Ms. Bennett be permanently or temporarily excused the witness? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Permanently? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Um, Bennett, I'm going to permanently excuse you as a witness. Uh, you're free to go about your usual duties and avocation. Just don't discuss your testimony with anybody except the attorneys in this case, okay? And Your Honor, we'll provide an order um, as it relates to Ms. Bennett. Yes. All right. Thank you, Ms. Bennett. You can step out, please. All right. Um, ladies and gentlemen from the state, are you prepared with your next witness? I'm just asking so I can go ahead and uh, yes, kind of let the jurors know in terms of lunch because it's about the new time hour anyways, about 10, almost 10 after. So is, uh, do you have? We do. Okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's do this. Um, let's come back for 1.15 and we'll start. 1.15 we'll actually uh, start and begin, uh, begin uh, the afternoon session. Okay. All right. Unless there's anything else, we'll be in recess until 1.15. All rise. <clears throat>
right. S summon, is it Mr. or Miss Montgomery Porter? All right, summon Miss Montgomery Porter, please. I just have her on the ready. Um, can we, uh, in fact, hold on wait a second. Um, go ahead and summon our jurors, please. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. All jurors present count four. All right, thank you, Sergeant Ingram. All right, state call your next witness. Yes, Your Honor. The state call crime scene unit manager L. Porter to stand. All right, summon Ms. Porter, please. Ms. Porter, good afternoon, madam. If you please approach the witness stand, once you get there, before you sit down, turn and face Sergeant Ingram, be sworn as a witness. My first name is Lashantis, L A S H A N T I S E. Last name Porter, P O R T E R. Good afternoon, Mr. Porter. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, can you tell the jury where you are currently in court? I am the crime scene unit manager at the Atlanta Police Department. How long have you been with the police department? I've been with the police department for 17 years. And can you explain to the jury what does your current position as the crime scene manager, what all do you do in that uh, capacity as APD? In my current position, I make sure that the crime scene unit and the crime scene techs are processing their scenes correctly correctly, um, making sure they're collecting evidence correctly, doing their reports on time. I also manage our background check unit and making sure they are um, assisting the public with their background checks. Um, we also do fingerprinting and we have a photo lab that provides photos to law enforcement agencies. Is that photo lab in-house? Yes. Now, uh, when you first started with APD, uh, how did you, what position did you hold? I started as a office support assistant and I worked in the personnel unit. What did you do after that? I went to the motors unit and then I went to um, Central Records and then from Central Records I went to the crime scene unit. Now, when you first went to the crime scene unit, uh, what was your initial position there? A crime scene tech one. What is crime scene tech one? A crime scene tech one is your entry level crime scene tech. Um, you are you go to scenes, but you respond with the senior technician. What is after a crime scene tech one? A crime scene tech two. Did you ever become a crime scene tech two? Yes. When did you become a crime scene two tech two? Well, I believe it was in two thousand and eleven. And what do you have to do to get uh, promoted, so to speak, to a crime scene tech two? We have a series of classes that we take at 
Georgia Public Safety Training Center in Forsyth. So once we take those seven classes and we have a year of um, work on the job training, then you get your certification. Now, in the state of Georgia, is other crime scene techs and other law enforcement <coughs> agencies, do they take similar classes? Everyone takes the same classes. So is the crime scene tech one and two, uh, and is there a crime scene tech three? It is. Is that something that's used with law enforcement agencies across the state? Um, some of them, not all. Now, um, did you ever get promoted to a crime scene tech three? I did. What do you have to do to uh, attain that? Um, so I was grandfathered into the position once they changed them. However, you have to have a IAI certification, which is a national forensic certification. Now, if you, uh, so in total with your time with the Atlanta Police Department, is it fair or not fair to say that the bulk of your time has been spent in some capacity as a crime scene technician? Yes. Now, when did you first take on your current position as a manager? It was in 2018. And you've been in that position from 2018 until present day 2024? Yes. Roughly how many crime scene techs work under you? Right now we have 10 crime scene techs. Now, the crime scene techs, do they respond across the city? Are they broken down by zone? How does that work? They respond across the whole city and the airport. Now, in your uh, capacity and time with APD, if you had a ballpark, how many crime scenes have you personally responded to? Over 5,000. And do you ever have to respond to crime scenes in your current position as a manager? No. Um, what would be a circumstance that you have to respond to one in present day? Um, if it's a major, major scene, or if we are short staff. Now, can you describe for the jury, uh, for the crime scene tech, say crime scene tech one that respond, what is their duties and responsibilities when they respond to crime scene? So upon responding to a crime scene, we get the calls on the radio, we respond to the scenes, and we were requested for photos. We take photos. We process for fingerprints. Uh, we collect evidence. We collect um, biological evidence, clothing, um, anything of the sort. We process vehicles if necessary. And when you, when crime scene techs with APD respond to the scene and take photographs, do you have any, do they have any interaction with officers or investigators on scene to know what to photograph? Yes. How can you kind of describe to the jury how that works? Your crime scene tech just got on scene. What are some of the steps that you all perform? Okay, so upon arriving on scene, we will speak with the lead investigator or the officer on scene. We will do a walkthrough of the scene, and that entails them letting us know um, the type of call it is, um, the type of processing they're requesting, um, how big the crime scene is, if we have to respond to multiple locations, and so on and so forth. Now, Manager Porter, did you uh, have, turn your attention to May 13th of 2013. On that day, did you respond to the crime scene related to the case you're here to testify to today? Yes. Now, what location did you respond to back on May 13th of 2013? It was 980 Confederate Avenue. And when you, was that a home, a building, an apartment? It was an apartment. And what specific apartment did you respond at 980 Confederate Ave? It was apartment D. D as in dog. D as in dog. Mm -hmm. Now, was that uh, in Fulton County? Yes, I believe so. And what, uh, how did you get dispatched to go there? What were you responding to? I was responding to a shots fired robbery call. And, uh... When you got there, can you describe to the jury what you did once you arrived to that scene? So upon arriving on the scene, I spoke with um, the lead investigator or the officer, and he advised uh, what he had and sh uh, showed me the apartment to photograph, and from there, I processed the scene. Now, when you processed the scene at 980 
better avenue apart from being, did you do a walkthrough of the scene before you started taking photographs? Yes. And did you, in fact, take crime scene photographs of this scene? Yes. Now, back then, what would you have used to take these photographs? We had a digital camera. Manager Porter, I'm going to approach you with state's exhibits 1 Alpha Alpha through 23 Alpha Alpha. You already show them what's the defense counsel, sir. Show them to the defense counsel, Your Honor. Route 23 Alpha Alpha. Which are the notice by the skin and bone? Did you? No, they're all there. Yes, they are. Swords there. Thank you. Manager Porter, I've handed you one Alpha Alpha through 23 Alpha Alpha. You can take a minute, flip through those, and when you're done looking through them, just look up at me. Thank you, Mayor. crime scene photos I took at the location. And are they uh, a fair and accurate depiction of the crime scene photographs you took in responding to this scene at 980 Confederate Avenue? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, the state moves to admit and tender an evidence. State's exhibits 1 through 23, Alpha Alpha at this time. Uh, any objection to states 1 Alpha Alpha through 23 Alpha Alpha? They don't object. All right, they're admitted and may be published as you see fit. Thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> now, I'm publishing State's Exhibit 1, Alpha Alpha. Manager Porter, uh, whatever, I'm going to walk through some of these. Okay. You can use the hard copies in front of you. There's a screen to your left, and then okay. there's one uh, behind you. Whichever of those works the best, okay. um, we're going to walk through this. Can you turn your attention to 1, Alpha Alpha, as shown on the screen? What does this photograph depict? This is an overall of the location at 980 Confederate Avenue. And why is it important to take an overall photograph? To show the location you're responding to. And uh, it does this uh, photograph, is there multiple units that were at 980 Confederate Avenue? Yes. Um, you recall how many there were? Um, from this picture, it looks as though there were four. Now, I'm going to publish State's Exhibit 2, Alpha Alpha. Is that the address of the location you responded to? Yes. Why is it important for you to take a photograph of the address when you respond to the crime scene? To depict the address that you're responding to. Publishing State's Exhibit 3, Alpha Alpha. What is depicted in 3, Alpha Alpha? Apartment doors C and D. Now, to get up there, did you or did you not have to go up any stairs? Yes, there were stairs. And why did you take this photograph that shows apartments C and D? It was a photograph in relation to apartment D that I was responding to. So it's to show it was two doors at the top of the stairs. Publishing State's Exhibit 4, Alpha Alpha. Is uh, 4, Alpha Alpha... Is that the same apartment D that was just depicted in three? Yes. Publishing five Alpha Alpha. Is this a close up of the apartment door D? Yes, it's a close up of the apartment letter. I'm publishing say exhibit six Alpha Alpha. What does this depict in the report? Um, the overall of the door with a defect in the door. Now, can you describe to the jury what you mean with a defect? What's that? So a defect is any type of damage to an object that wasn't there previously. 
and the crime scene techs with the Atlanta Police Department, do they classify, uh, is that how y'all are trained to classify things as defects? Yes. And Publishing States Exhibit 7 out out. Is this a close up of defects on the door? Yes. Publishing States Exhibit 8 Alpha Alpha. Now, what does this affect manage for? This is the overall of the front door from the inside of the apartment. And Publishing States Exhibit 9 Alpha Alpha. What does 9 Alpha Alpha detect? A uh, close-up of a defect in the same door. Now, in the defect we had shown that was on the front, and the defect as depicted in 9 Alpha Alpha, do they have any relation to one another? Um, could be. So there was a defect on the front of the door, and is this a defect on the back of the door? Yes. Publishing states exhibit 10 Alpha Alpha. What does, or what windows does are depicted in 10 Alpha Alpha. Is that apartment C or apartment D? This apartment D. Um, those windows are, I think, are adjacent to the door, the front door. And uh, do you notice any defects in 10 Alpha Alpha? Yes, there's a defect in the window. Um, the, we have a little, the computer screen has pollen because it's a yellow view. So I'm going to have this stick, manager Porter, and I'm going to have you show because it's a little hard to see. Okay where this defect is, if I can find my, oh, thank you, Ms. Love. So, if you wouldn't mind, Manager Porter, can you show the jury where this defect is? Thank you. You can keep that up there, I may use it again. Um, if we could zoom out. Turning to 11 Alpha Alpha. Is this a zoomed-in depiction of that defect on the window outside apartment D? Yes, it's a close-up. Publishing space exhibit 12, Alpha Alpha. What, uh, and why do you take a photograph such as 12, Alpha Alpha, as you did here? So we, uh, probably answering our location, we take overalls of the entire area. And in 12, Alpha Alpha is... That door, uh, the same door we had just talked about with the defect in it? Yes. And do you see uh, the window that we had just looked at that had a defect in it? Yes. Um, where is it in this photograph? It's to the left of the door. Is it the window that's closer to the door? Yes. Now, um, Publishing States Exhibit 13 Alpha Alpha. Manager Porter, uh, do you see, or what is 13 Alpha Alpha depict? I'll start with that. It's the overall of the living area. And do you see the boxes in 13 Alpha Alpha? Yes. Um, could you tell the jury what some of those boxes are to be photographed? Um, shoe boxes and like a pamper box. What, uh, can you show, I'll uh, try to zoom in the best you can, can you point where you just mentioned that there's a camper box depicted there? Mm -hmm. If you don't mind, thank you, ma'am. Now, uh, can you tell what size that camper box is? Uh, size, size one. Um, do you have kids yourself, Ann Porter? Yes. Uh, are you familiar with what a size one camper box, what, what kind of age does that correspond with? Uh, probably between newborn and eight, nine months. Now, uh, do you see the window that has that defect in it in say, is it 13 out of Yes. Can you uh, describe or show the jury where that is? The window. Yes, thank you, thank you. Now, I'm going to uh, publish State's Exhibit 14, Alpha Alpha. Bless you. Bless you. Is this the uh, same window we had just uh, discussed in 13, Alpha Alpha? Yes. Publishing State's Exhibit 15, Alpha Alpha. What 
does this show mandatory? This is an overall of that window with the blinds pulled up, um, depicting the defect. Yeah. So you remember earlier on when we, the window that was to the right of part D, we saw seeing a defect on the outside of the window? Yes. Does this correspond to that? Yes, this is the inside. And is the front door in relation to this to the immediate right or left of this defect? Um, on the inside to the right. Publishing says is it 16 alpha alpha? Is this a zoomed in of that defect? Yes, so close up of the defect. I may have your assistance just because of this uh, cue. Can you show where that defect is? Thank you, ma'am. Publishing states exhibit 17 alpha alpha. What does this depict? The uh, overall of that same living area with the defect in the wall. Can you show where that defect in the wall is? I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit for you. Now, looking at that defect, I want to put back up briefly states exhibit 13 alpha alpha. Do you see that defect in your that you just showed? Yes. Can you uh, show the jury where that is? And is that over the living room couch area of that apartment? Yes. Thank you. I'm going to go back to 17 alpha alpha. Publishing 18, uh, out, out. do you see any other defects in this photograph other than the defect you described on the wall? Yes, there are defects in the closet doors and the wall next to the closet doors. Would you mind using that corner to show the jury where these are? And do you see any other defects if I move this photograph to the left? Yes, to the, the other closet, set of closet doors. Thank you. Publishing states exhibit 19 alpha alpha. What does this depict, man, before? The close up of the defect above the couch. Publishing 20 alpha alpha. Mm. You see the defects you just described depicted in this photograph? Yes, in the first set of closet doors in the wall. Publishing 21 alpha alpha. In the second set of closet doors. Publishing 22 alpha alpha. The, the close-up of the second set of closet doors. This is a zoom in of the, the defect you just described in the closet door. Mm -hmm. Now, Manager Porter, when you respond and go out to crime scenes, do you ever, after you're done, generate a crime scene report? Yes. Um, can you kind of describe to the jury what's your process for creating that report? So when we when we get back to the office, we insert our crime scene report. Um, we use the information from what the officers gave us on scene, which would be the case number, the name, the date, um, victim, suspect information. If there's a vehicle involved, there's vehicle information, the address, and their identifying numbers, their name, unit numbers, and radio number. Now, in this crime scene report, do you ever provide any descriptions or break down the photographs that you took if you took some on scene? Yes. How are they broken down? Um, by photo narrative. Um, we break them down one photo, one by one. And um, do you also describe in this report what you did when you responded on scene? Yes. Now, in this case, when you took the crime scene photographs, did you take any other photographs of any other units at 980 Confederate Avenue, that building? Um, no. 
if you have been requested to take, if that, if you had responded there and we needed to take photographs of the entire building shot up, would you have taken those photographs if there was additional defects to photographs? Yes. Now, uh, I want to approach and hand you 54 Alpha Alpha, which is the crime scene report. Your Honor, defense counsel wants to approach relation 54 Alpha Alpha.
Now, Manage Porter, uh, did you create a proxy report in relation to this case? Yes. I'm going to approach you with 54 Alpha Alpha. If you could take a minute to look through that and look up at me once you are comfortable with that document, if you are. What is 54 Alpha Alpha? It's my crime scene report from uh, May 13th. And how do you recognize it? Um, it has my name on it. Is it a fair and accurate depiction of the crime scene report you generated when you responded to 980 Confederate Avenue on May 13th, 2013? Yes. At this time, the state moves to tender and lit into evidence. 54 Alpha Alpha, you're on. Any further objections? Previous objection. Okay, Fred Morgan, uh, I'm going to admit to 54 Alpha Alpha. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Manager Porter, uh, does crime scene reports have um, what is classified as a NCIC number on it? Yes. What is an NCIC number? It's the crime reporting number for that particular crime. What was the NCIC number for this case? Uh, 1207. What does that correspond to? Um, a robbery in a residence with a gun involved. Now, um, once you create that crime scene report, when did you generate this specific report in this case? Um, on May 17th. Is that usual or unusual to have the report generated days uh, after the response? Um, not unusual. Now, does, in the photographs you took that we have just walked through, uh, did those photographs go through that APD lab that we had discussed earlier? Yes. Can you describe how does the photo lab work once you, you're fresh off the scene at 9 a.m. Confederate Avenue and you go back to the lab? How does that process work? Um, so when we get back to the office and we do our reports, um, we put our photos on a disc. Um, we place the report and the disc into an envelope, and we send it downstairs to our photo lab. Now, is this like... Uh, so once the photo lab gets it, they process the photos? Yes. And do they make any documentation for uh, after the photo lab processes it at APD? Um, the, only, the They document whether the correct number of photos that say on the report is on the CD. They document whether the photo descriptions are what they depict on the picture. Now, do you know what day the photo lab completed reviewing the photographs in this report? Um, I don't know what day they completed, but they received it on May 20th of 2013. And do you see the initials of someone who worked in the APD photo lab that would review this back on May 20th, 2013? Yes. Uh, what are those initials and who was it? R.T. Ronald Thomas. Is that someone that you worked with? Yes. Now, uh, I want to, he's admitted, but I have not yet published this exhibit 23 Alpha Alpha. I'd like to do that now. <laughs> Manager Porter, are you right or left handed? I'm right handed. Uh, and so, what hand do you use to shoot the photographs that you use in your own scene? My right hand. Um, so in this photograph, 23 Alpha Alpha, is that your hand that's depicted in the photograph? No. And how do you know that? Um, because they're not wearing gloves. And do you wear gloves when you handle items uh, on scene? Yes. Now, um, what is 23 Alpha Alpha? Um, it's a picture of a cell phone with two men on the front. What kind of cell phone was it? Um, Metro PCS, Samsung. And whose cell phone was it? Uh, Your Honor, I have a response. Uh, it's not hearsay of who she needs. To, she took this photograph for a reason, so it's not, there's no truth of the matter of certain whose cell phone she believed it was, but I need to know why she took this photograph. I'm going to sustain your objection. You can bring it to that. Yes, Your Honor. So, in your crime scene report, did you have a photo description for 23 Alpha Alpha? Yes. What was the photo description that you put 
put in your crime scene report for 23 alpha alpha, that's the picture on the screen. Your Honor, if that came from here, say it, then I'll check. Can you see it, please? I see you on the screen. Yes, you can, Your Honor. Or oh, it's on the screen, Your Honor? No, let me see the report. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Manager Porter, who was the, when, when you responded to the scene, was there, was the victim on scene? When you, when you um, I don't recall. I don't um, remember. Did, who was the victim that you was at this scene um, that you responded to? Who was the victim? Yes. Um, Archelle and Benny. Yes, my crime scene report. And uh, with looking at your crime scene report that you personally generated after responding to the shots fired at 980 Confederate Avenue, Apartment B, help you in knowing who the victim was of that crime? Yes. Your Honor, the state's going to hand or allow manager Porter to look at 54 Alpha Alpha to, to, to figure out who, who she put as the victim and refresh her recollection. Has your recollection of who the victim was been refreshed, Manager Porter? Yes. Who was the victim for this shots uh, fired at Apartment B at 98 Confederate Avenue? Achille and Bennett. And have you ever responded to the scene where victims have photographs of 
suspects that they say committed a crime against them. Yes. And have you ever had the opportunity to photograph or obtain who a victim says is someone who committed a crime while you're on scene? Yes. And how do you document that? By taking a photograph of it. So, uh, in 23 Alpha Alpha, why did you take a photograph of this black and red Metro PCS Samsung cell phone? Hold on, let's see exactly what it is. Assume facts and evidence, she's not testified that she took a photograph. Did any other crime scene technicians go to you and respond with you to a part of the DNA? <coughs> no. Are all the photographs, the crime scene photographs that are depicted and outlined in your report ones that you personally photographed? Yes. Did you personally photograph uh, Exhibit 23 Alpha Alpha that's uh, from this scene? Yes. And, Manager Porter, why did you photograph this black and red Metro PCS Samsung cell phone that has two individuals on it as depicted in 23 Alpha Alpha? It was at the direction of the investigator. And um, who, uh, what was your understanding of who was depicted in this cell phone? Those were the suspects. Your Honor, may I uh, briefly respond or approach? It's brief. So well, I can give one word. Impeachment. Now, I'm going to show the same objection. And your Honor, effect on the listener would be the state's uh, secondary response. Why she took this? As to a uh, witness? Yes, Your Honor. Oh. Thank you, Your Honor. So, Manager Porter, uh, when you took this photograph, why did you take it? The investigator asked for me to take it. And would you, if you took a photograph of the cell phone that the investigator asked, um, did, you, did you take any photographs of any other cell phones from this scene? No. Did you take a uh, photo? How did you know what was on? How did it become this specific photograph on the cell phone? Who? Um, oh, it's not just a blank screen or just have a time on it. Why does it pick these two individuals? I get the, so somebody brought it up. Now, how, Manager Porter, did you describe 23 Alpha Alpha in the report that you personally generated? Overall of suspects on victim's phone. Now, when you responded to this department on May 13th, 2013, did you ever, did you know Ms. Bennett? No. Did, do you even know or did you know back then who was depicted on the cell phone that you took a photograph of? No. Did you, when you responded on scene, were the defects in the front door and the window, were they there when you took photographs on yes. the scene? Yes. Was the defect in the closet and over the living room, and in the living room, over the couch, were they present when you physically walked to this apartment and took that photograph? Yes. Was the size one cambered box that was sitting right next to the window with the defect through it, was that physically there when you walked through and took a photograph of it? Yes. And, uh, Manager Porter, was the entire building shot up or just uh, apartment D when you responded on May 13th, 2013? Objection, Your Honor, cause speculation. When you personally responded to that, if there was, <coughs> did you see any other defects or bullet holes in that building that you inspected? Um, I didn't. And if you would have, would you have taken a photograph? Would that have been something significant to document or responding to shots fired on the occupant? Yes. Did uh, anyone else report their apartment being shot up besides apartment D? Objection, call sec, yes, Did you take photographs of the outside or inside other than 
You heard a photograph that has apartment C and apartment D? Yes. Did you ever walk inside apartment C and take photographs inside? No. Did you ever walk inside the lower unit apartment? No. Um, why was it that you just took photographs of apartment D? Because when I arrived, the officers directed me to D. investigation that you spoke to when you got to the scene was an officer Kirkman is that correct yes as an APD see detective at that time I don't remember but he was certainly the one who was in charge of the scene yes he was there before you got there yes he as far as you know he had spoken to individuals before you got there is that true as far as I know all right and uh, this was in 2013 yes. approximately 10 maybe a little bit more than 10 years ago, right? Yes. You remember this from looking at the uh, report that you referenced a little earlier, correct? Yes. You remember it based on uh, conversations that you had with the district attorney's office, is that right? Yes. Okay. And would you agree with me that um, crime scenes sometimes tell a story? <laughs> yes. Right? They kind of, you can look at the evidence that you see at a crime scene, and that will give you some indication as to what may have happened at that location, correct? Yes. Because you can't always go by what someone tells you happened at a scene, right? Right. Someone could tell you that something happened a certain way, but the evidence might speak differently. Isn't that true? Right. All right. And so when you arrive as a crime scene investigator, what you're doing is you're doing an unbiased diagnosis or analysis of the evidence that you find at the location, correct? Yes. And that is what you did here. Yes. And when you took those photographs, you were taking photographs so that if need be, a detective or, God forbid, a, a district attorney could go back and look at the evidence and make a determination about what that evidence tells them about a case, right? Your Honor, is to say, God forbid, in that question. Oh. Um, I'm going to ask the indulgence of uh, Ms. Knight. Uh, please, if um, in regards to putting some of those photographs up, and I'll, I'll note them one by one if you don't mind. That's okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. So, Investigator Porter, I want to start with what you described as. Um, remember, you were asked questions by the district attorney about the NCIC code. Yes. Twelve oh seven, right? Yes. And and it, it was noted on the report as robbery, residence, gun. Is that correct? Yes. You input that information, correct? Um, no. Who did? It generates um, with the call. Okay. You didn't take the call, right? No, not a call taker. Right. And so you don't know that a robbery or, or of a residence or a gun occurred. You just know that this is the code that was put in this. Is that correct? Yes. And you didn't put it in? No. Because you weren't there at the scene, correct? No. You didn't witness any of this? No. 
you showed up on the 13th of May, 2013, correct? Yes. And the information that you had, it, well, you tell me if you had this information, is that something had occurred at that location on May the 12th of 2013. Is that right? Um, no, that's generated as well from the incident number. So you don't even know when the incident occurred? No. Okay, you just know that you were called to a location, you showed up on the 13th, and you were asked, or you were directed by Officer Kirkman to go ahead and quote, process the scene. Yes. Okay. Now, um, you get there, and we're looking at State's Exhibit 1AA. This is the, um, the apartment that you arrived at, correct? Yes. All right. You go up those stairs, and behind the bushes or the, the, the branches is apartment D at 980 Confederate Avenue. Is that correct? Yes. All right. If we can move forward, please, Ms. Knight, to uh, State's Exhibit uh, 2AA and 3AA. All right. That's apartment D. Is that correct? Yes. And one of the things that you pointed out to the to the jury a little bit earlier, let's go to 4AA, is the door of apartment D. Is that right? Yes. Now, just to be clear, when you got there, um, Officer Kirkman didn't give you any instructions about any place else, right? Correct. He wanted you to focus on D. Yes. You have no idea whether or not there was anything involving C, A, Q, I don't know. All you knew about was you were directed to apartment D, right? Yes. Okay. And so you you weren't doing an investigation of your own. You were essentially following the instructions of Officer Kirkman, correct? Correct. All right. You have no idea about any statements that have been given to Officer Kirkman by anyone before you got there, right? No. Okay. You are obviously not in a position to pass upon or to talk about the truthfulness of any statement given to anyone before you got there, right? Don't answer that. Don't answer that. Improper. Okay, I'll rephrase. Um, so you get to the apartment, and this is, you're directed to the door of apartment D, correct? Yes. All right. We can go forward to 5AA, please. All right. That's a close-up of the letter D, all right? And then 6 is a closer-up shot of the door. Is that right? Yes. Now, you've got that pointer in front of you. Actually, let me, may I just step up? Oh, yes, sir. All right. So you've got it over there to your left, but I guess you should yes. probably turn around and look around for it. All right. So right here we've got um, what you described as a defect. Is that right? Yes. And, and for purposes of, of educating the jury, a defect just means that there's something there in the door that is not normal, right? Yeah. Something has caused this defect or indentation in the door, correct? You don't know what it is. You don't know the circumstances under which it occurred, right? Now, but as we, let's go to 7AA. All right, now, tell me if as you look at 7AA, this close-up of the defect, whether you can tell what it is. What you mean, it's a defect? Right. It is not a hole, is it? No. In other words, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. That's, no, it's just the defect. Okay. And do me a favor. It's my fault because you're, you're facing me, but um, Madam Court Reporter is behind okay. you, so when you speak, make sure you speak loudly enough so she can pick you up. Okay. Otherwise, I get the Um. All right. And so what you've got is a defect right there on the door, but not a hole that goes through the door, correct? Correct. All right. Now, are you able to tell from looking at States Exhibit 7AA whether that appears to be a hole that has been patched? No, I can't tell. Okay. Oh, but what you can tell is that it's not a clear through hole. There's, there's nothing going through the door, right? Correct. All right. Let's go to um, State's Exhibit 8AA, please. Now, that's an interior uh, shot of the inside of that same door, correct? Yes. All right. 9AA? All right. 9AA appears to be a defect on the inside of the door. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Let's see what 10AA is. Okay, let's go back to nine, please. All right, is there any way to, to zoom in on that, um, Ms. Knight? All right, as you look at that zoomed in image of 9AA, which is the inside of the door, would you agree with me that that defect is not a hole? There's nothing that, it's not, it's, it's not a through and through hole, is that correct? Correct. 
Would you agree with me that it appears to be patched in some way? There's something inside of that defect. Is that Objection, right? Objection, Your Honor. Counsel, that's Does um, does the defect in states nine AA appear to be a hole that is patched? Objection, Your Honor. Speculation. All right. Based on your experience as a crime scene technician, crime scene tech one, two, three, and now manager, does the um, the states nine AA appear to show a defect that is a patched hole? Objection, Your Honor. Does States 9AA um, show a hole that goes straight through the door? No. Oh. Now, do you know what 9A represents? Do you have any idea what it means? What it represents, what the picture represents? Yes. You want to tell us? It's, it's a defect to the door. Oh. You don't know how it's false? No. Can we um, go back to States Exhibit 3AA, please? <clears throat> OK. Um, Ms. Knight, is it possible to zoom in a little bit over there on, uh, on C, on door C? <clears throat> OK. Ms. Porter? Mm -hmm. By the way, is, is, um, was your name different back in 2013? Yes. Was it Price? No. Okay. Who's investigator Price? I don't. I don't know. Okay. All right. Um, States three AA. That is a picture of the door, not D, but C. Is that right? Yes. Now, right below the, I guess I would say peephole. Depends what you call it. Um, what is it so I'm pointing at? That appears to be a defect in the door. A defect in the door of C. Yes. Did um. Did Officer Kirkman direct you to do anything with with uh, with that door or any anything with Department C? No. Right. Can you see where I'm pointing right here? Mm -hmm. What does that appear to be? I, I can't tell. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay, so as you as you come up to let's zoom back out if you don't mind. I'm just, thank you. So as you come up uh, to these two doors, you see C and D, both of which have defects on them. Correct? Yes. Okay. Let's move forward if we can to um, 10 AA. All right, 10 AA is a. Um, am I correct that that is a picture of the exterior of the window that is to the right of door D? Yes. Uh, would you agree that it appears to have a defect in it? Yes. Uh, it looks like something has gone through that window. Is that correct? Yes. And that is, in fact, a through and through hole, right? Yes. I mean, it's not just a crack. It looks like something has gone through that window. Is that correct? Yes. All right. If we can go to 11A, A, please. That's a close up. Is that right? Yes. Now, um, can we zoom in on that a little bit, please, Ms. Knight? All right, now, this is fairly, let me just ask you. Um, you would agree that something goes through a piece of glass, um, there's a missing, there's a shard, or there's something missing from that glass, right? Some glass is gone from that point, right? Yes. All right. Zoom out a, a, a bit, if you don't mind. All right. Now, you would agree with me that as you look at this picture, uh, you don't see any shards of glass or any splinters of glass or anything on the outside of that window sill. Is that right? Correct. And certainly you didn't see any or weren't directed to photograph any, correct? Correct. All right. If we can go to 12 AA and then 13. Now, 
13AA, as you're inside of the apartment, as you're being directed by Officer Kirkman, um, you take note of this window that has the blinds over it, correct? Correct. Am I correct that there appears to be something missing uh, on the right side, as I'm standing, looking at it? Yes. Right side of the, of the blinds? Yes. Okay. Can I go to 14AA, please? As you look at 14AA, that's a little closer uh, picture of that window. Is that right? Yes. 15AA? Now, in 15AA, am I correct that you can see that hole that we talked about before where something has come through that window? Yes. Now, looking directly below that, below that hole, uh, you see a windowsill, correct? Yes. You see objects below that window, below, below the, uh, the hole, um, on the windowsill, correct? Yes. See a candle, right? Yes. And some other objects. Yes. Now, what you don't see, or, or you do not see any shards of glass or any splinters of glass or anything like that on that windowsill, do you? No. And in fact, not just on the windowsill, but anywhere in the, in the apartment, immediately below that whole window, you don't see any shards of glass or any any splinters of glass or anything, did you? I don't recall any, no. Okay, you didn't take any pictures of it, right? No. If you had seen some, you would have taken pictures, right? Yes. Because that, again, would have helped to tell a story about what you're seeing at the crime scene, correct? Yes. Now, let's go to 16AA. And 17? 17AA, you were shown earlier. This is a picture of the interior of this apartment, is that right? Yes. And again, you're seeing defects in this apartment, but you have no idea personally as to how or when they got there, correct? Correct. So as you look at the defect above the couch in States Exhibit 17AA, you have no idea when that defect got there. No. You have no idea how it got there. No. 18AA, please. Now, 18AA, you would agree, is a little closer-up shot of that... Um, of that defect above the couch? Yes. Now, you have the ability, or crime scene has the ability to try and make a determination about the trajectory of, um, of a bullet, right? Yes. In other words, what do you call those things, you? Do you call them dowels? Rods, rods. trajectory rods. Wooden rods, where if you have um, a bullet defect on one location, and another one on another location, you can use those rods to try and determine what direction the bullet traveled in, right? Yes. Do we even know that 18AA is a defect caused by a bullet? Do we know that? I'm not sure, no. Because when you examined it and you took pictures of it, you, you would have had an opportunity to look at it up close, right? Yes. And generally, you would, your experience tells you that when a gun is fired and a bullet leaves that gun, it goes somewhere, right? The bullet goes somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, there were no bullet fragments in this, in this defect in the wall, were there? No. There were no shell casings found anywhere inside of that apartment, correct? No. There were no shell casings found outside of the apartment, true? True. No. As you sit here right now, you don't know whether or not this bullet defect above this couch has anything to do with the bullet defect on the on the window that we looked at earlier, do you? No. Let's go to 19AA. That's a little closer up uh, picture of that, that defect, is that right? Yes. Can we zoom in on that please, uh, Ms. Knight? Now, as you look at uh, this photograph, does there appear to be uh, anything on the inside of that bullet defect, or <clears throat> patching no. or putty or anything like that? No. Let's go to the next photograph. I think that's 20. 20AA. Now, 20AA is a picture of a closet door and some other stuff, right? Yes. Let's go to 21AA, please. All right. Now, 21AA, am I correct that as we're looking at that, we see three defects. Yes. You've got one here on the wall, correct? Yes. And what appears to be two on 
this closet door. Is that right? Yes. All right. Can we go to 22, please? All right. Now, I want to draw your attention first to the, the middle defect. All right. You see the one I'm pointing to right here? Okay. Right. Now, it appears to you, and, and maybe you can tell me from your memory from 2013, that this appears to be a metal door. Is that right? It appears to be metal? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And the defect that I'm pointing at, the one in the middle, mm -hmm. does it appear to you as though the metal is, or the defect, uh, protrudes outwards? Yes. All right. It, it, it doesn't look as though something is going in. It looks as though something has come out. Is that correct? Yes. Objection, Your Honor. Cause for speculation. I'll stand the question. Yes, sir. In your role as a crime scene technician, um, are you called upon to make a determination as to whether something appears to be an entrance um, defect or an exit defect, for example? No, I'm not a ballistics expert. Okay. But you can certainly look at that, that picture, and show that the, and you can determine that the metal on that door appears to be coming outwards as opposed to inwards. Is that right? Objection, Your Honor. Lack of foundation based on the witness test. All right. Ms. Porter, um, let's see. So in this photograph, 22AA, we've got one, two, and three defects. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Can we go to 23AA, please? 24, actually go back to Can we go to um, 18 AA? <laughs> All right. In 18 AA, Ms. Porter, am I correct that we see the defect above the couch that we mentioned before, right? Yes. The defect to the right side of this or to the right of this closet, correct? Yes. A defect in the one door of the closet, right? Yes. Um, let's see, one, two, three, a fourth defect uh, on the on the edge of this side of the, the, the door to the closet, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. And then if we move over here to this other closet, there's also a defect here, is that correct? Uh -huh, not. It appears to be. I'm sorry? It appears to be, yes. Okay. So if we're counting the defect that we see on the inside of this apartment, we've got one, two, three, four, and five, is that correct? Yes. And remind me again how many holes we saw in the window. Just one. And remind me again whether or not there was a through and through hole in the in the door. No. Okay, so we've got one defect in the window that appears to be something coming in the window, right? Yes. We got four defects on the inside of the house of the apartment. Yes. One and four don't correspond, right? You said one and four don't correspond. Don't correspond, right? No. The the closet, the closet door. Um, let's see. I think that's twenty one AA. Uh, here we go. Did you? Did either you or, or Officer Kirkman or anybody else who was trying to figure out what actually happened at this, this apartment look on the inside? of that closet to see if there were any uh, bullet fragments on the inside of that closet. I don't recall if we did. But by the time you, you got here to the scene in 2013, you've been a crime scene investigator for how long? Um, about four years. Okay. You know what to look for when you're a crime scene, right? Yes.
the, um, the picture of the cell phone. Let's go to, was that, 23AA. Now, whose hand is that? I don't know. Did you take this picture? Yes. You don't remember whose hand was holding that, that phone when you took the picture? No, I don't recall. Okay. You don't know anything about the individuals in this picture, right? No. Don't know anything about the phone, right? No. Don't know who the phone belongs to. No. Don't know the circum. Don't know whether this is a a a picture or a, a screenshot or whatever it is, right? No. All right. Go back to one AA, please. All right. So, at the conclusion of your um, your investigation, or your work at this scene, um, you left out of there having taken some pictures, correct? Yes. Didn't get any fingerprints from anywhere, right? No. Were you directed by Officer Kirkman or anyone else to uh, dust for or check for fingerprints anywhere in the apartment? No. On the front door or the, the no. anywhere inside? No. No. Okay. Um, you did not conduct any uh, any test with a, with a rod to determine the trajectory of anything that came into the apartment. True. No. Right. All right. Uh, you did not find any any uh, bullet defects anywhere in the apartment or in any of those any of those bullet defects. Correct. Correct. No fragments whatsoever. No. No shell casings. No. Inside or outside. No. All right. You have, there is nothing about this scene that you photographed back in 2013, 10 plus years ago, that tells you anything about what happened there that day. Great. Objection, Your Honor. Basis. That's why we're here, Your Honor. In fact, you don't even know how or when any of those defects or anything got to that location. True? Correct. All right. Thank you. That's all I have. Any further examination? Regret. Thank you, Your Honor. Manager Porter, on cross, you were asked about the story that your photo was told. Do you remember that question? Yes. Does your narrative that you put in the crime scene report capture the story that your photographs were intended to tell? Yes. And what is the purpose in general of your narrative? to summarize what we did on a crime scene. And did your narrative, in fact, tell you the story in this case as defense counsel had asked you on cross? And was that story, did it involve any other apartments besides the apartment? No. Question. Did your narrative involve any other apartments besides apartment B? No. And you were asked on cross about your photos labeled and about telling the story. You remember that? Yes. With photograph 23 Alpha Alpha, did that tell the story, as the defense counsel said, of a person being victimized by the two people captured on that phone? No. Why did you take a photograph of 23 Alpha Alpha? I was directed to by the lead investigator on scene. And why did you label it as you did in the crime scene report? I'm going to say it's because that's what they informed me on the scene. And you were asked on cross about only following directions. Did you personally have a practice of observing all the surroundings in a situation like this for other relevant defects? Yes. Did anyone from any other apartment draw you to any other defects? No. Did anyone from apartment downstairs grab your attention that day and say, and direct you to take photographs from a crime that committed against you? No. Did anybody from apartment C come out when you were on scene and direct you to take photographs of a crime or something that happened in their apartment? No. The defense counsel had asked you on cross about, did you look through into the closet? Do you remember that? Yes. Uh, did you look through every nook and cranny of apartment B? for shards of glass or shell cases? No. Did you search, open, and examine all of those boxes right next to the pampered box that we had talked about? No. Is it 
the fifth house that actually would be located in showcases in the yard or outside the apartment, you recall that? Yes. Um, is it possible that you could have missed a shell casing? Did you search every blade of grass outside? Uh, Objection, close speculation. I understand. Did, did you search every blade of grass outside of that apartment? No. When people on scene direct you to prove of crimes that the lead investigator overlooked, do you, would you? Do you call the investigator's attention to that? Yes. Did that happen here? Was there anything else that you saw when examining the crime scene that you directed the investigator about? No. Did anyone other than Ms. Arshelly Bennett report being robbed or having their house shot into? Hey, sister. Uh, super facts and evidence. Uh, this, there's no one that report anything to this witness. I see. Manager Porter, did was there any other victims that you put in your crime scene report other than Miss Arshelly Bennett? No. No further questions. Thank you, Manager Porter. You don't know whether Arshelly and Bennett was a victim or not, do you? According to my report. What someone told you? Yes. Officer Kirkman? Yes. So Officer Kirkman would have more information than you would, wouldn't he? Yes. You were asked uh, just very, a little while ago about whether or not any occupants from apartment C or anywhere else came and directed you to do anything. As far as you know, any uh, police officers live in, in uh, apartment C? No. Right, but the persons who were directing you to do stuff to collect evidence were the seasoned officers, specifically Officer Kirkman, right? Yes. All right. That's all. <laughs> Anything further? Not from the state, no. She may be permanently excused, Your Honor. All right. Uh... Ms. Porter, I'm going to go ahead and permanently excuse you as a witness. That means you're free to go about your usual deeds and application. Just don't discuss your testimony anybody except the attorneys in this case, okay? All right. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, how about we take 10 minutes and then we proceed. Is your next witness available, madam? Yes, sir. I'm the outside. Okay. All right. We're going to be in recess, and then we'll come back at 3 o'clock. All rise.
I've examined them. And uh, do you recognize what is in each one, and we'll go one at a time, of those um, exhibits? Okay. Yes? I do. And do they accurately depict what is shown in each of the exhibits? And I forget the numbers, if you can just help me. Uh, number 182 and 134. And do they accurately depict what's described? I mean, they're just, they're exhibit numbers to me. I don't know what else they mean. It's Not the exhibit number, I'm sorry. The um, photographs, the items in the photographs, the items depicted. Yeah, I remember the crime scene technician taking these photos. Your Honor, I move for the admission of Mr. Williams number <coughs> 182 and 134. No objection, Your Honor. All right, Defendant Williams uh, 182 and 134. Yes, sir. Are admitted and may be published as you see fit. Okay. I'd like to go through um, with you a couple of things, then we're going to get to those exhibits, if that's okay. That's fine with me. You remember talking um, with the jurors about um, surveillance video at the laundromat? And we're talking again, it's been a long time. We're talking about September 11, 2013, Adrian Bean slamming into the side of the laundromat. That's <clears throat> the 126 Cleveland Avenue address. I remember that. Okay. And um, if we show you what's already been marked and admitted, um, as Mr. Williams, number 144, with Mr. Kokomo showing you. You got 134 on here, Counselor. I'm going to use a different exhibit. It's already admitted into okay. evidence, if that's okay. And then we'll come to those two. Okay. All right, thanks. <laughs> so you see, um, it's on the screen. Um, Detective Quinn, you see Mr. Williams or JW exhibit 144? I see it now. And then I asked Mr. Kokomo if he could just zoom in on, tell us if you recognize this as a surveillance video camera on the side of that building on top of the uh, red 2004 Nissan vehicle. Can you see that item? I mean, I see something fuzzy up here underneath this green awning right here. Yes. Yeah. Right underneath it. And do you recognize that as a surveillance video camera? I do now. All right. Um, and then if you go to Mr. Williams uh, 116, Mr. Kokomo, just another angle of that same photograph. It's already in evidence. And then Mr. Kokomo, if you could zoom in on that. You see the other side of that. Uh, surveillance camera? I would say that's a better shot of it, yeah. Okay. Now, um, you are aware that officers, with the assistance of the owner of the laundromat at 116 Cleveland Avenue, came out to the scene and viewed video surveillance. Are you aware of that? I wasn't aware of that. I didn't get anything reported back to me. Okay. Do, are you familiar with radio traffic in this case concerning watching um, the video surveillance. I am not. All right. I'm going to play for you. It's already in evidence. Um, states number 122 CD with the help of the Honorable Ms. Knight, if you don't mind. And Your Honor, this is already in evidence. And then I'm starting it. They're very short, but I'm starting at 720 if you could listen, if you don't mind. No problem. And this should be the police traffic, okay? Sounds good.
appreciate it. Your Honor, we're starting at 710 with the court's permission. All right, yes, sir. Hey, I got something I can put in the back of your car. I need you to keep an eye on I'm right over here. <laughs> hey, units, if you guys see a uh, Toyota Tundra green in color, uh, let that vehicle inside. It's going to be the owner. He can uh, access the video footage for us. And then, Your Honor, with the court's permission, that is stopped at 732. And then, if you, Ms. Honorable Ms. Knight, can you go to 825, if you don't mind? Same exhibit, Your Honor. Sure. No, no, that's fine. Okay, Your Honor, um, with the court's permission, starting at 822. Yes, sir. I stand in the green tundra. Is the old night of laundromat, green tundra, coming up to the crime station. Yeah, let him through. His name should be Khan, I think. Hey, let him up. Let him up here. That green tundra, let him up here. Okay, and that ended, Your Honor, at um, 846. If you can go, Honorable Councilor Knight, to 1413. Want to start there? That's fine. Um, Your Honor, we're starting at 1403 with the court's permission. Yes, okay, come, come in. Can you advise if we need to set up a uh, separate channel for this incident? Hey, what time does call come up, radio? Okay, the original call or when the 63 came up? Uh, just the 63. We're trying to watch the video right now to get a good time frame. Stand by. Your Honor, it stopped at 1436, and then the last one is 1508. Your Honor, with the court's permission, we're starting at 1457. Yes, sir. 30526 30526 Okay, the 63 came up around 1158 around 1158 Your Honor, we're stopping at 1515. Okay. Um detective. Um it's, the jurors may have heard it a couple of times. Can you tell them what a 63 is? 63 is a police signal for an officer needs help right away. Okay. And um, the time, 11.58, that's morning time. That's military time. Correct. Two minutes till noon, yes. Okay. Now, you were, um, to be fair to you, nobody reported this to you, that they that's were watching correct. the video. And I believe, based upon that, but you correct me if I'm wrong, that's why you didn't have the video secured, saved, correct? I knew nothing of a video on this case. Okay. All right. Now, I'd like to talk with you and help me with the number. It's the one with the house with the bicycle that's flat. It's in evidence now. What the house you? is uh, number 134. Can you uh, pull that up, Mr. Kokomo, if you don't mind? Your Honor, can we display number 134? It's in evidence. Yes, sir. <laughs> Your 
I may approach while it's going on? You may, sir. Just wait one second. Are you ready? Okay, sorry. Um, detective, can I ask you a question? Is your screen green like the one above your head? Or do you have a clear picture? It's not that green. Uh, it looks just like the uh, exhibit you passed to me on mine. Okay, and the exhibit just, the jurors are going to have this eventually in deliberation, but it's not green, right? The, the, uh, the photograph's pretty it clear. Is not. All right. Um, with regards to Mr. Williams number 134 that's on the green screen, and then you could look at the picture or the screen next to you, to your left, that damage, to your knowledge, came by Mr. Beans driving of that vehicle. Is that fair to say? I would say so. And you mentioned earlier um, that there was a bicycle that was mangled that may be my word but that was uh you said something like a child could have been on that bike or something remember that i said that when in a recorded interview with mr bean on the 17th day of september 2013 yeah i, I probably said tricycle or something out of effect yeah. okay and this is the one of the bikes anyway that you were talking about fair to say that's fair all right and to your knowledge none of this to the house the damage to the porch area that wasn't done before Mr. Bean's driving. Is that fair to say? Not as far as I know. All right. Now, um, I want to go to the, you wanted to do a deep dive. I think that was your word. If it's wrong, please correct me. Into the uh, car, the Nissan 2004 vehicle at the uh, police parking lot or the impound lot. Is that fair to say? I don't know if I said deep dive. Uh, I wanted to, my concern was that hole in that headrest was a primary concern to me. All right, let's talk about that if you don't mind. Okay, so um, some of these exhibits are already in, or all these exhibits should now be in. May I approach John? You may, sir. Okay. If we can start with Mr. Williams, number 155, you can take a peek at that. And Your Honor, that's already in evidence. Mr. Kokomo, are you helping us out? Thank you, sir. Okay. So you should see Detective Quinn, Mr. Williams, number 155 on your screen. Do you see that? I do. All right. Now, that is the passenger side rear uh, window door area looking into the vehicle. Is that true? Yeah, we call them vent windows, yeah. And the vent window um, was taken out um, based upon your information by Detective Robertson Ells firing a self-defense. I mean, that was my educated theory. I mean, based off what I knew, I assumed I wasn't there. I could just go by the corresponding hole inside the car in the headrest. And then for corresponding holes inside the headrest, um, there's also Mr. Murphy who shot twice. Is that fair to say? See, I don't know how many times Murphy was shot. That was never a, the thought, any kind of report given to me. I know that was some kind of shooting where he got it in the leg or legs. Okay. Were you aware, and if, if you just answered this, just said, just answered, 
that Mr. Murphy was shot in his heel on one leg and then on his upper left um, artery um, in his thigh, upper thigh. I never knew that. Okay, that's fine. Now, how many shots fired did Robertson L. get off when he was thinking that he and his partners were in danger of getting killed? I don't remember off the top. I mean, he was administratively um, dealt with by the supervisor before I got there. Uh, at some point, I believe Detective Velasquez took an inventory of what he should have had in the gun. Uh, based off what I know, he only hit the car in question, the getaway car, one time. How do you know that? Based off my investigation, I see the one hole in the window and I saw the hole in the headdress. So I have to take some kind of investigative steps to explain that. The mystery was the Walter Murphy stuff. That was never clear. And when you say, I just want to break it down if you don't mind, one hole in the window, we really don't know how many bullets went through that window, do we? There's no way to tell. Okay. But if you take an educated guess, a common person, I, I see some kind of impact that headrest. So I have to make investigative conclusions for the purpose of this case, which is criminal against the officer. And then Walter Murphy, you said that's the, was it wild card you said? I didn't say wild card, but I never knew because I never got any other information about how he got his injuries. Now, tell the jurors whether there were any shell casings, to your knowledge, found inside that vehicle. To my knowledge, there were none. Now, I'd like to talk with you about, and just help me with the number again. Um, Mr. Williams' number, is it 182 in front of you? It is. Can we show that, number 182? Are you familiar with when a gun is fired, how um, gun powder residue and particles come out the muzzle of the gun as well as the missile? You know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. Okay. Now, this is what you said is a defect, and we're going to show the other side too, but this is a defect potentially caused by a bullet. Is that fair to say? I believe that. And around, and I know it's green on the screen of the jurors, but do you see any type of soot or gunpowder burns or stippling or anything like that in this headrest? I don't see any of that. Explain to the jurors what those concepts are, if you don't mind, as you understand them. I understand you may not be a ballistic expert, but we'll have them coming. Okay, tell me what you want me to tell the jurors again. Explain to them how when a, a gun is fired, how um, not only does a bullet or the missile, but the gunpowder particles come out and how it burns into an item. I mean, I can give you a rudimentary breakdown, but... If you're close up on something, there's going to probably, more than likely, be scorching or burning from that explosion of that projectile coming out of that gun. You can make reasonable conclusions that the gunshots weren't fired close up in any situation if you don't have that present. And that's because if you know that coming out of the end of the gun, the muzzle of the gun, is burning gunpowder, right? Yeah, and that's as far as I go, because I'm not a gun expert, but I've been shooting them for years. Do you know how far, and if you don't, just say I don't know. Just say, Brian, I don't know. How far any of those weapons found in um, the 2004 Nissan, how far the gunpowder would come out of the uh, end of the gun? I, I can't answer those kind of ballistic questions for you. All right. Now, um, if we look at... State's Exhibit, so I assume that we're coming back to the side. State's Exhibit number 169.
C, by the way. Mr. Kearns. Okay. Detective, do you, Honorable Detective Quinn, do you see 169C? I do. And Colette or Charlie? Okay. Now, um, do you call that a dowel or a rod, the, the red item that's going through the, it's perforating the uh, headrest in the passenger seat? Yeah, we call them dowels, rods. Okay. And generally, I know there could be ricochets, but generally a bullet, is it fair to say, goes in a straight line when it fires? I guess that's fair to say. And here... Just, you can explain to the jurors, but you see the yellow dowel and then going into the red dowel, then going to another red dowel. You see that? I see that. Um, and th there seems to be like an angle from the yellow to the red. No one's saying that the bullet traveled in that direction. That's just... How That's just a weak piece of prop, you know, stuff we put together. It just kind of broke at that point and separated from the, the red, so it's not a straight. So... The trajectory, though, is what I'll focus on, if you don't mind, um, goes from, it appears to be going in a downward trajectory, slightly downward. Is that fair to say? I, through the headrest, by the way. Through the headrest, yes. Okay. And the, the way I get that is it appears, at least from this picture, and we could look at other pictures, that the exit on the, towards the um, front part of that headrest, towards the front seat. Yes, is lower than the headrest on the back part of that uh, headrest. Is that fair? I think that's fair to say. Okay. So assuming a bullet goes in a straight direction, if a person, let's say, in the back seat fired that weapon, the gun or the, mu the muzzle of the gun has to be at whatever angle can make that, has to be higher than the entrance wound to the headrest to make a downward angle. Is that fair I mean, to say? I, I can't speak on that. I'm not, I'm not no expert with all that. I, I have to take investigative conclusions. And my investigative conclusion was that rear vent window was blown up. And so there's a corresponding hole inside the car. And there was a guy sitting up front at six foot eight, 300 pounds, got hit in the back. That's all I'm trying to prove at that point. And that gentleman who is six foot eight, got a bit shot in the back. Left shoulder. Is that fair to say? That's why I'm there. Other than that, I would not even be on this scene. But I got shot by the police. Sorry about that. I'm focused on the left shoulder of the gentleman 6'8. Okay. Great pro, pro throw, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, if you go to 70C, as in Colette Charlie, it's a similar photograph, but it's a little more direct. You see how the angle is going down? I see it, yes. All right. And then I'd like to go to. 72C, if you don't mind. And here we have the other side, and we're looking towards the uh, front passenger seat headrest um, with the dowel coming in the downward directory, coming from the way I'm looking at the picture, from left to right angle. Is that fair to say? Downward and then left to right? I say downward. Okay, you don't see left to right. I mean, I'm not, I'm not using that kind of terminology. Downward is all I'm going to. 
Okay. Come on, please. Now, let's talk about, do you recognize in 172C, as in Colette, Charlie, State's Exhibit, do you see what's purported blood on that headrest? I mean, I don't know if that's blood or what. I mean, I can't tell. It probably is. Okay. The brother got shot in the back. He, he's bleeding. And you also told us that from your knowledge and belief, shot in the left side shoulder area. Fair to say? <clears throat> I don't remember unless you can show it to me, but I know that he got shot in the back. Okay. Get me left side, shoulder, just ask Trish. Okay, um, I'm going to come right back to that. They'll, they'll pull it. Okay. All right, now the gentleman in the front seat, to our knowledge, is 6'8". You've said that multiple times, fair to say? Yeah, he's a big dude. And if he's shot in the shoulder area, um, something pressed, if that is blood, to the headrest left side, fair to say? Okay, one more time, Mr. Steele. Sure. Something pressed up. That's a press wound, right? That's a blood transfer. Objection, I don't. I stand objection. Do you see any other potential blood in that seat area, headrest area? From this photograph, no. Okay. <laughs> if you come across it in any photograph, just let us know, okay? Objection, it's not a I stand objection. All right. Let me do this. Go to, if you don't mind, help me out, 174C, as in Colette Charlie. It's admitted, Your Honor. Detective, is that the good-looking man in this picture? Is that you? That's me. I don't know if I'm good-looking, but, you know. Okay. So now, if Roberson L., do you know how, do you know, do you remember what Rober, Mr. Officer Roberson L. looks like? Do I remember what he looks like? Yeah. Yeah. Um, is he taller then the vehicle, the top of the vehicle, that's depicted in 174C? Absolutely. And if he's shooting a weapon um, from outside the car into the car um, in a downward angle, would that be consistent with him standing near the car, shooting into the car? Objection, speculation. A standing objection. Now, looking at 174C, which is on your screen, did you ever put, I know there's, I know there's blood there, but in proper protective gear, did you ever put a person who is slim, six foot three inches tall in that back seat and then do the rod to see whether it would strike the person sitting in the back seat? I did not. You told the jury earlier that you would, that you would surprise, it may not be the exact quote, I'll get you the quote. You were surprised that if somebody's sitting in that rear passenger seat, um, they didn't get shot. You remember that? I may have said that. And you also said that it would, if you were asked by the Honorable District Attorney Hilton, um, whether you can fit yourself, you being, I think you said you're 6'1", is that right? Absolutely, they tell me. Um, if you could fit yourself in the back of a car and you stated that you'd be crunched. You remember that testimony? I don't remember it, but the only reason I said my daughter had that car is so I've been in the back seat. Okay. Until she tore it up. Okay. And were you crunched in the back seat of the car? Is that where you got that from? I'm just not understanding the question. I'm, I'm trying to maybe, I'm, I want to make sure I give you the right answer, but I'm not understanding where you're going because if you're in the back seat and there's gunfire, you're not going to be sitting up straight. You're going to be moving around because there's gunfire. It makes people move. And you move forward in your seat just now. You realize that? Okay, I can move to the side. I move forward. I'm just trying to make you understand when guns are breaking out, everybody's getting on the floor. And Mr. In my experience. And Mr. Murphy is to the left behind the driver, according to you, what you were told, right? Based off what Mr. Bean said. And if bullets are coming through the headrest from outside the car, just like depicted in 17C, 174C, you see that? I do. And if bullets are coming across the back seat into Mr. Murphy, into his leg and heel in a downward direction from outside the car. A standing objection. How would the person, as you know, in the back of that car not get hit? Objection speculation. On the right-hand side. 
Speculation. Did you, the question. Did you do any type of experiment? It's a simple experiment. But did you do any type of experiment to determine whether a person sitting in that back seat could wear those bullets to Mr. Murphy and the headrest and how they would miss him? Did you do anything? I did not. I just have common sense, and I've been around a lot of gunfire, and I've written a lot of reports related to people getting shot or getting shot at. I can only go by my experience. <coughs> Folks don't sit up straight when gunshots are going down. Just my experience. Now, I'd like you to look at 167C, as in Colette. Charlie, it states exhibits already admitted into evidence. How much room, if you measured or, or did something, how much room is there between the rear seat, where it is, and the front passenger seat? I can't tell you how much room, but I know I could get back there because I've been back there in my daughter's car before she tore it up. Did you do it in this case? With Did this not. Event? Okay. Now, you see on 167C uh, what purports to be blood in the back of that car? I believe that's blood. And is it true that law enforcement pulled Mr. Murphy out of that car, Mr. Walter Murphy? So I don't know how he got out of the car because I wasn't privy to actually witnessing that. I'm only going by the officers that responded that detained both he and Mr. Pro for what they told me. I don't know which side they even took him out of the car. And do you know that law enforcement took Mr. Murphy out of the car? I don't know that they took him out. I don't know if he got on his own free will, of his own power. I'm not sure. Do you remember writing an affidavit that you swore to that Mr. Walter Murphy was pulled from the records by police? I could have said it, but I don't remember. Your Honor, may I approach for a second? You may. Sean? You may, sir. May I you, sir? Absolutely. I've shown you um, a three-page document. What's this, the search warrant I did? Yeah. Okay. You can look at anything you need. I'm interested, actually. Have to well, first point line. to where you want me to go. That'll make it go faster. First line. Okay. Does that refresh your memory? Let me see. Okay, I wrote poll. I'll concede to that, but I'm writing a warrant to a judge trying to get the, the permission to get inside that car legally. I'm sorry, I was. Uh... Yeah, so what I said was I used the word pull. When you're taking somebody out of a car, pull. They probably did, but I wasn't there. So I added that to give the judge that's going to sign that warrant a picture what was going on, which would legally allow me to get inside that car if he felt so, if he felt that I had that, that in fact, that right or that permission. And a warrant, just jurors may not know how to get a warrant. That's, that's on oath, right? Same oath that you take today. It's oath. It's what you believe at the time, yes. Okay. Um, also, if this refreshes your memory, um, In the first paragraph, and I'll find you the exact area of that same document. If you refresh your memory, that Mr. Prothro was shot in the left shoulder. But give me one second. Take your time. Looks like it's that third paragraph, Counselor, on the second page. Did you find it for me? Okay. Is it fair to say left, and I appreciate it, left shoulder? It's fair. Okay. All right. 
Your Honor, may I collect that item? Yes. May I you, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, um, now, shortly after um, September 11, 2013, and I'm estimating, I'm not holding you to this, but approximately a week later, you're working your extra job, um, Neiman Marcus. You remember that at the mall? Yes. Oh, I do remember that, yeah. Okay, and Neiman Marcus, just tell the ladies and gentlemen, jury. They may all know that maybe some of them don't know. Just describe what Neiman Marcus is. It's a high-end uh, department store. And I, okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. For 11 years, I sat at the precious jewels counter in full uniform as the Atlanta police officer off duty. And that first occasion, um, and I'm not holding you to a, a date at all. Yeah, because I don't know it. I, I know. <laughs> But um, you see um, Mr. Williams shopping in this high-end store, fair to say? I saw him walk in. Okay. Do you know if he was shopping? <clears throat> saw him walk in. So that means, you know, you got you to come in and start shopping. So I saw him walk in. All right. And you told Mr. Williams about um, what Mr. Bean had told you a week before, whenever it was. Remember that? A week or so, yes. And Mr. Williams told you something effect. I don't even know what you're talking about. Remember testifying to that? Absolutely. And Mr. Williams was adamant about that, you said. Jumping up and down, yes. And um, then about, and again, loosely, a couple of weeks later, go by, maybe two or three weeks later, you remember that? Yes, sir. And Mr. Williams again is shopping or entering, maybe to shop Neiman Markets. Remember all that? Yes, sir. Same thing, you're working the off-duty just to give it context, so menswear is downstairs. My stool to get on that down escalator to get to menswear, which I'm assuming where he was going, you got to go past me. So I don't see you come in, but that's where most men, they go straight down. And I'm sitting right there so I can see down there and I can see the precious jewels counter. And at that time, you explained to Mr. Williams that you did some investigation to him and you found out he was going to blow up. Remember testifying to that? Did some research. And blow up, just explain that to the jury. He's going to get a bag. Explain that better. <laughs> He's about ready to get some money. And you were talking about music, right? Yeah, like I said, I went, I did, I went online, and, and I saw, I said, oh, damn, you know, like, this is really great happen. And then a month maybe goes by, we're estimating, and then Mr. Williams is, um, I believe, with his sister, you said. 100%. And at that time, Mr. Williams and or his sister, maybe both of them, whatever you tell us, they actually um, collectively asked you if you would help out with road security. You remember that? Just to be precise, his sister, his sister Dolly, and that's what I remember. It's a name, you know, you don't hear much. She explained that she was his now his manager. And they wanted to hire me as their road security. And did you ever have any dealings with security for um, popular artists? That's not what I do. I'm a low rent, get your extra cheese type police officer. I do the stuff with the least impact, like sitting at a jewelry counter for 11 years. And that's uh, again at that high end store, uh, Neiman Marcus. Beautiful right? store, yes. And then the last encounter that uh, you told us about is, or I think the fourth encounter is what you called it, is where uh, there was no conversation, but Mr. Williams pointing at Mr. Walter Murphy going down an escalator. Mr. Walter Murphy has a stack of money coming out of his pocket. He's pointing at the stack that you can't fold that's in Walter's right pocket. We both chuckled respectively, and they went on downstairs and did whatever they did. Okay. All right. Your Honor, may I have one moment? You may, sir.
Out of any question, thank you so much. Your thank Honor, you, thank Mr. Steele. Any, any other further examination of retired Detective Quinn? Anybody else? Cross? All right. Can you read, Rick, madam? Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ms. Hill. Um, I want to take you back to the initial cross-examination, first starting with Mr. Shard. Okay. Okay. Now, Mr. Shard asked you a number of questions about Mr. Nava Flores. Do you recall that? I do. All right. Do you know if the statement that uh, Mr. Nava Flores made to the other law enforcement officers, do you know if that was recorded or not? I know nothing about that. And did Mr. Nava Flores account for his initial lie on the recording that you made with him? He did. And was the initial lie um, that someone stole his vehicle? That's what I heard. And then did he correct that to say no one stole his vehicle, but that he allowed a group of individuals to borrow his vehicle? That's correct. And so the initial lie, would stealing a car be a crime? A felony. Okay. And is borrowing a car a crime? Not at all. Okay. So the part that they're alluding to being cut off is the crime, which would be the initial story of the car being stolen? That was the first lie. Yeah, that was it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Shard asked you about, if you can remember, um, whether or not you recorded your interaction with Courtney B. Do you recall that line of question? I remember that. Did you, why didn't you record um, your communication with Miss Courtney B? I didn't think it was important. You know, we, I wasn't endeavoring to even encounter her. She just rolled up when I went to this house where everything supposedly originated. So I made note of it. Recording can be actual notes. It can be thoughts. If I'm, if I'm retaining that information, I'm going to put it on paper later. That's all it was. Now, I'm going to go to the line of questions. Do you remember Mr. Karras and Matthews asking you a series of questions? I do. Okay. Um, he asked you questions about eyewitnesses. Do you remember that line of questioning? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Are there times when eyewitnesses to crimes do not want to come forward? Have you experienced that in your 33 years as a law enforcement officer? Almost every case. Um, Mr. Matthews asked you a number of questions about investigators knocking on doors um, when they go out and canvas a scene. Do all investigators knock on doors? No, nah, a lot of them don't like it. Do all investigators go out to the actual crime scene um, in which an incident occurs? Not all. In your experiences working as a homicide <clears throat> detective and being on the street, do are all cases investigated the same way? Do you know, are all cases investigated the same way? No. Why is that? Speculation. Every person, let's just even forget about police work. If you work at the bakery, everybody makes the donuts a different way. It's the same thing in police work. There's so many people don't do it the way I do it. It works for me. As long as I'm following the law and most of the guidelines of the police department, it's a good look. Um, do all cases always have forensic evidence, meaning fingerprints, um, DNA? Do all cases have that type of evidence? No. Do all investigators get to speak um, with persons of interest or suspects? No. Have you found in your experiences in dealing with suspects that sometimes they give what some may call self-serving or statements that benefit them um, when they're talking to the police? That's mostly my experience. Have you found um, that sometimes suspects or persons of interest are not always fully forthcoming? That's true, I do. Have you failed at times that some suspects give half truths, they give partial truths and partial lies when telling their version of a story? Sometimes it's a mix. (laughs) 
Now, going to uh, Mr. Steele's initial line of questioning before we took our break, um, do you recall him asking you questions about Adrian Bean and Adrian Bean putting thumb into this case? Do you recall that line of questioning? I remember something like that. Was the first time that you heard the name Thug on the jail calls or when you interviewed Mr. B? I heard it on the jail call. And was that when Mr. B was speaking to his wife and this other friend or third, this other friend that he was speaking with? Yes. And during those jail calls, did you hear the friend relay to um, Mr. Bean things that he was hearing himself from Thug or other people? Yes. And did it appear, just listen to the conversation, that the friend was just trying to put Thug in this? Objection, Your Honor. Speculation, sir. I stand objection. Based on what you heard, did the friend randomly interject the, or was that a part of the conversation that he was having with Mr. B? Objection, Your Honor. That's the evidence rule. Your Honor, I'm basing upon what I'm uh, detective. Saying, I'm saying that you may you can lay a little more foundation by doing it. Go to read you. Did you hear the third party speaking with Mr. Um, Bean on a call? I did. Did you hear the third party mention Thug's name? Yes. Was that in response to a conversation he was having with Mr. Bean about what happened on September 11, 2013? It was. And were the two of them speaking freely based upon your conversation, excuse, excuse me, speaking freely based upon their conversation about what happened um, during September 11, 2013, and what was happening after the incident once Mr. Bean was arrested? Objection, Your Honor. That's the speculation. I stand objection. Let me ask you this. When Mr. Bean came forward, um, did he admit to being the driver in an armed robbery? He did. And was he eventually charged with that armed robbery? He was. As it relates to Thug, did he advise you that Thug sat in the back seat? He did. Did he ever try to say that um, Thug was a shooter in this incident? No. Did he ever say that Thug got out the car during this incident? At some point, yes. During the robbery portion, did he say that Thug got out the car at all? Never said that. So with all of the stuff being the driver, being the shooter, Bean didn't say that Thug <clears throat> was the driver or the shooter. He put himself as the driver. DK as a shooter, but that thug was just in the car during the entire incident. Your Honor, I'm going to yeah, I'm sustaining the objection. Okay. Now, going to Ashley Davis, um, Mr. Still asked you a number of questions about Ashley Davis. Do you recall that line of question? I remember that, yes. Okay. And when he asked you about what Ashley Davis saw, he kept referring to the individual she saw coming out the car as people. Do you remember that? <coughs> yeah, I remember that. Okay. When Ashley Davis made her report, was she specific as to the sex of the individuals that she saw coming out of the vehicle that she observed when they ran out of the car? Yeah, she gave, she gave up the sexes. What was it? Males.
And lastly, at any point in you speaking with Mr. B, did he ever disavow the words of the third party in that jail call? I'm going to sustain the objection. It's confusing too. After taking out your arrest warrants, did that conclude, and testifying, of course, here today, did that conclude your involvement in this case? Yes, ma'am, it did. I have no further questions. Any cross? Mr. Matthews, Mr. Sharp, or Mr. or Mr. Steele, anything? No, Your Honor. All right. May we... Um, Permanently or temporarily excuse Detective Retired Quinn? Permanently, Your Honor. All right, Detective Quinn, um, thank you for coming in. Uh, please don't discuss your testimony with anybody except the attorneys in this case, okay, sir? Thank you, Judge. All right, thank you. Yes. All right, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, we have come to the uh, end of our business day. So uh, what I'd like to do is to recess you for the, for the evening. Uh, I'm sorry you'll miss the rest of the eclipse, but you might catch a few minutes of it anyways. But um, if I could ask you all to come tomorrow morning for a 9 o'clock, for an anticipated 9.30 start time, 9.30, 9.45 start time. But if you all could be here by 9 o'clock or shortly thereafter, that would be fabulous, okay? All right. Any minister inquiry of me? Anyone? Okay. Hearing none, let me go ahead and go through your, um, your admonitions. Please leave your notepads in the basket in the back. Uh, please do not discuss anything uh, that you have heard thus far in court amongst yourselves in small groups while you're sitting back there or any other times that you may be in each other's presence or uh, outside of each other's presence with third parties such as your family or any well wishes or anything such as that. Um, don't go by and visit any of the scenes that may be uh, depicted in this case. Remember, it would also be a violation to have any third party discuss anything in this particular case in your presence or hearing, and if anybody should try and attempt to do so, you need to let myself and uh, Sergeant Ingram know immediately. Please also do not listen to any third-party uh, recounts of this trial, either on any form of social media, podcasts, or the news, because uh, remember what I told you, and I've continued to tell you that you can only consider what's been presented uh, in this courtroom, and you cannot consider any third party recaps and that would be a violation. Also remember what I told you before, you cannot sit and handicap or otherwise recap the testimony as you go along, that that would be a violation. Remember, you cannot consider this case
properly until um, I tell you it is appropriate and I give you instructions on how you're supposed to begin and continue your delivery process. So, ladies and gentlemen, unless you have anything else of me, what I will do is I will recess you all tomorrow morning and we'll see you at, uh, at 9 o'clock or thereabouts. Once you all get here, then we'll start somewhere around 9.30 and uh, uh, 9.45 with your uh, with all of you accounted for, okay? All right, anything else, be? All right, if not, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the rest of your evening, okay? All rise. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. West. West. Chair that. Chair those. Where's the witnesses? All right, councils, um, I am going to hand out for your consideration um, a copy of uh, the recent administrative order regarding the length of the trial that I told you I would go through with you. Um, Ms. Love, have you completed the um, witness list that's supposed to be attached to this as Exhibit A? All right. All right, um, that was supposed to be done earlier today because if not, I'll just attach the one you gave me uh, on Friday with everybody's notes on it. So, yeah, we have that for you. All right, is there a. Um, Mr. Kearns, if you'll go ahead and hand out each set of lawyers a uh, copy of the administrative order, please. Mr. Kearns, did you give uh, the state? I'm about to write Okay, all right. I want to make sure I have enough copies for everybody. Okay. Council, the only thing that's missing from this, uh, this, which I'll label as the next court's exhibit in order, is the uh, witness list on exhibit A, which will be uh, fixed in just a minute. Um, but 
what I want to go through with you all, just to just to make sure that we're all on the same same sheet of music, is um, I've covered the reasons and rationale that uh, I have entered this administrative order, and it was in part due to Mr. Kendrick's motion that was made on March twenty March nineteenth and March twenty second, um, and the state's response there too. But the court has had been uh, considering. Uh, taking up this issue, uh, Mr. Weinstein's motion just gave me, and the state's response just gave the court a vehicle to to talk about it. So um, I've I've gone through the dates already in the motion. I mean, my order that that uh, we spent thus far, given the significant dates of um, plea and arraignment, pretrial proceedings, pre pretrial -pre motions, jury selection, uh, the seating of our petite jury and opening statements and a presentation of evidence. So uh, in order to expedite or otherwise move this trial along, which I'm also I'll note today was was pretty good, a um, couple things. On Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays, I'd like you all to be here for 845. Um, I'll, of course, reserve the right to change that time should other things uh, or events present. But for, for, the, for ongoing, so starting this Thursday, uh, you need to be here by 845. Consistent with that, I have asked Captain Kendall to um, alert the sheriff staff, and I'll make sure that an order is, has been entered and signed for you all to get into the courthouse early enough so you may um, get situated and be ready to proceed uh, at 845 on Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Um, we talked about the disclosure of evidence and timely disclosure. It's a, if not already uh, in discovery, and any purported evidence not timely disclosed or already in discovery is subject to exclusion within the court's discretion. And uh, to that extent, you all can certainly look at OCGA 17-16-6 and Muse versus the state which we talked about earlier in the, in, in the trial of this case, where, the, where our Supreme Court um, indicates that the preference is, uh, of course, to, um, to give a continuance at this point in time, given the, um, the commencement of this trial and the number of months and uh, months of days and months that we've already um, gone, that I'm going to exercise my discretion at this point to do a couple of things. I told you I might dismiss the jury for the day if I have to hear argument on the admission of, of evidence that hasn't been on time or that's been untimely disclosed. So, and other things that I may do consistent with this order. So, um, third thing, any evidence offered by any counsel should be submitted to the court or and as court reporter in physical form, that is hard copy documents, images to include USB drives, CDs for audio and video, and marked as an appropriate exhibit at the time of its admission to be properly made a part of the record. So if you're going to show something, there should be a corresponding document, CD, or USB, or photo that is handed to Ms. Weaver, shown to counsel, of course, but handed to Ms. Weaver um, for her inclusion uh, into the into the record at the time that the proponent seeks to admit that particular um, evidence or, or, or attempts to make it part of the record. And then for physical and for evidence that's already been admitted, um, but has not been submitted to the court in physical form, uh, I'm directing counsel that you need to provide Ms. Weaver a copy of that um, exhibit within seven days of the entry of this order. So if you owe her something, she's going to ask you for it and it needs to be turned in within a week's hence, if not sooner. All right. Uh, the next thing is, uh, we have talk talked about this already, but direct counsel is directed to provide a list of all proposed witnesses, the acts which count the witnesses testifying to in the exhibits that the parties will seek to admit for each of the witnesses to the court and all interested parties um, every other Friday, no later than 5 p.m. This has been, I understand, already started to occur. I'd like that to continue. Um, 
And related to that, in number five, counsel is to copy the court on communications between the parties uh, and to immediately apprise the court of any issues that arise from said communications. So, um, and I directed that you all copy me, uh, the court, uh, Ms. Weaver, and my staff attorney, Mr. Kearns, on these communications. And that includes motions or other things that need to be filed, or you have, for example, Mr. Steele had something this morning that hadn't been accepted for filing, but um, the, to the extent you can just send me a copy of it along with everybody else, then I can at least kind of read it and kind of get a, get a head start on it. So in the future, please just know to do that as well as Unless when you file a motion, unless you click the court, I'm not an e-file party. So, uh, and I don't usually check um, Odyssey. So my preference is that you attach a copy of whatever it is that you fi you're filing or have filed and go ahead and uh, let me know so that I can kind of, I'll get it and I can read it at least before um, you all come to present it to me. Um, number six covers us working potentially on the weekends on Saturday and Sunday. That is not my preference. That is not the first thing I'd like to do. Of course, that's been within the court's discretion. I'll advise you accordingly if I believe that that has come to, that event needs to come to pass. But, um, that will depend much on how things go, uh, going forward. But like I said, that's not my original intent to, to work on the weekends, but we need to kind of put a press on, yeah, on presentation and streamlining our presentation. Of course, I can use my contempt power to uh, enforce any of the uh, requirements. I'm not looking to hold anybody in contempt. It's just a tool that I may have and can utilize. And then lastly is um, I can modify this for good cause, order for good cause, and I will uh, consistent with um, anything that may may be presented but um i told you i, I would enter that so i'm i'm going to enter that uh as part of the uh us going forward i know you've had an opportunity to ask questions do you have any other additional questions based on what i have entered thus far all right hearing none uh miss love you need you owe us um exhibit a all right, is there any other administrator that I need to take up with you all before tomorrow morning? You all need to be here. Uh, I said, like I said, be prepared for, I would advise you to be here at nine so we can start around 9.30, 9.45 the latest, okay? All right, but is there anything I need to be made aware of at this point in time? Anyone? Yes, Mr. Steele. John, I assume it's coming up uh, soon with witnesses. So my motion limit number four six that was uh, delivered this morning um, has to do with uh, Mr. Walter uh, Murphy, Mr. Dexter Montgomery, witnesses in paragraph four. Five, six, seven, and eight of that motion. And also, um, I could put it in writing, but I make a, a motion also to exclude uh, any mention, unless it's already vetted by the Honorable Court, uh, by a witness, Mr. White, with the prosecution attempting to. Uh, somehow um, comment adversely on interviewing him by lawyers <coughs> in the case. Who's being called tomorrow? Thank you, Mr. Steele. Who's being called as a witness tomorrow? Witnesses tomorrow? Officer Bitts, 
and then we'll start the Dexter Montgomery case, which will be <coughs> Mr. Montgomery, Mr. Wright, and potentially Mr. Chairman Landers and Mr. Murphy. I don't know if all these people will start tomorrow, but that's just the decision. Okay, what about, um, do you have Mr. Seals' motion um, number four, uh, motion money number 46, paragraph four up? You hand that to Mr. Um, Mr. Um, yes. Kearns, yes, and we'll go ahead and attach it and file it. Thank you. And make sure everybody else gets a copy, or is it? Um, I think they've already been. If you want to just show them that to make sure they have a copy that you uh, have otherwise given out, yes. that would be fine. Okay, let's turn now to number four of uh, motion, uh, Mr. Steele's motion in Lemony, um, number 46. What about these uh, Dexter Montgomery exhibits, the uh, statements, handwritten statements? When were they handed out? And he's claiming that none of these people were on the witness list. Your Honor, the statement about the sense of call, um, Mr. James, Mr. Moody, or Mr. Davis, these were the witnesses that were a part of the evidence when we went to go pick up the evidence. And so we were just These were the witness statements that were in evidence, and so we turned them, they were like physically in evidence, and so we turned them over, but the state does not intend to call any of these three individuals. So you're not planning on, so you're not planning on calling Mr. James, Mr. Moody, or Mr. Davis? Correct, Your Honor. Okay. And uh, pursuant to um, the court's directives that we've been given, as I stated earlier, we provided the universe of possible um, exhibits, and these are in no way intended to say that we are with certainty calling them uh, using these exhibits. Um, I believe that the motion in limine to restrict the use of the uh, possible list of exhibits is premature and more appropriately made if the state tendered such an, an item to refresh recollection or something like that. But at this point, Your Honor, all that we have done is given to the defense as the court ordered um, the exhibits that may be used with that next act. All right. To the extent that you're not calling any of those witnesses, I'll reserve right to determine whether or not those statements are admissible for any other re for any other reason with any other witness. But to the extent that they're not you know, trying, you're not going to try and introduce them at this time. Is that correct? Correct, Your Honor. We don't All right. actually. Correct. We don't, um, at this point, intend to introduce them first, you know. All right. Certainly not for the sake of introducing hearsay statements. But, again, they are uh, statements that were taken dependent on cross-examination, dependent on the testimony that comes out through witnesses on either direct or cross-examination. We just, these are possibly and prospectively. You gave, you, you tender them because they were. They were given to you in discovery. Right. Yes. Okay. All right. Mr. Steele, Mr. Adams, anything else depending upon what is uh, adduced at trial? No, sir. Okay. Let's move on to um, number five concerning uh, uh, ex parte seal motion in regards to Mr. Walter Murphy. Your Honor, um, Judge, these are items that have previously been provided. 
um, to the defense in discovery. Again, I do not foresee a need to introduce this particular exhibit as evidence in this case at this time. This is a um, witness that the state will be calling and there is, these are the items that were provided to the defense in discovery as it relates to this particular act. We have simply, per the court's directive, turned over the universe of potential exhibits that we are in um, receipt of and that we have in our possession at this time. The okay. point was to make, to, to foresee all possible exhibits for any reason and so that we don't incur um, the <coughs> argument that defense has not been placed on notice that this potentially could have been used as an exhibit. We are complying with what the court has ordered and your honor, we cannot, um, as the court is aware, we cannot um, predict what questions the defense is going to ask or what answers they're going to elicit, but um, these items at this time, the state has no reason to introduce on their own. Unless and, unless the doors are, are right. so through, through the witness, Mr. Murphy? Through the witness, Mr. Or in Murphy. Somebody, or some other examination? Correct. All right. So okay. All right. Mr. Steele, anything else in regards to paragraph number five? No, sir. Okay. All right. What about paragraph number six? Uh, referencing a chain of custody report. It's the same answer, Your Honor, the same response. Um, this is, Mr. Steele's argument is that it does not appear to be relevant or have a proper foundation. How on earth can he make the assertion at this point before anything has been introduced as it relates to this act? What's so, the chain of custody report go to? Your Honor, the... Chain of custody report that he is referring to. Can you pull up that exhibit PowerPoint? Um, Your Honor has not been uh, tendered. This is again premature. We're pulling up our exhibit list. Okay, but what does it refer to? What, Mr. Steele? What does the chain of custody re report go to? What item? Is that's not? It's not written in your motion, or I don't. Okay. If you could even give a slide number so that we could. Give me one second. Sure, okay. <coughs> Thank you. 
chain of custody for Jackson Montgomery's I'm, lo I'm looking for it right now. Is a is a um, who's going to purportedly um, authentic? You're going to have several people, I guess, uh, talk about exhibits one three one one three two one three three before they're admitted, if 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 appropriate. The, what did you say? Your Honor, the, there are items that were in the evidence that um, was uh, reviewed by counsel for the defendants. We don't even see a need to. <laughs> introduce the chain of custody. These are just, it's the chain of custody for the items that are in evidence. It's, it's okay, all right. So we may, or, you may or may not introduce them. Correct. Right. Okay, all right. I'll defer on that, Mr. Steele, until, and, and if, if other appropriate objections need to be made, um, I'll, I'll cross that bridge when we get to it, okay? Yes, sir. All right. In terms of uh, Mr. Williams, 46, is there anything else other than those three paragraphs that you'd like me to yes. pass on? Paragraph 7 and 8, if you don't mind, sir. All right, there's this jail call from Kevin Treadwell. What about it? So, Your Honor, um... He's not on the witness list. Your Honor, again, he is not, um, the jail call is not something that at this time we are offering. Your Honor, it is a part of the universe of items. We would not be tendering anything that is hearsay without a proper foundation and um, without something having um so Mr. Treadwell is not expected to call and be called as a witness? Kelvin Treadwell, um, we do not expect to call as a witness, but let me say this. Kelvin Treadwell um, was a part of the um, shooting, the impetus, frankly, for the shooting. And, Your Honor, he was his jail call was one of the items that um, was introduced, uh, that was provided in discovery. At this time, again, this is part of the universe of exhibits based on what questions they ask. This is our best effort to be inclusive, overly inclusive. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Mr. Steele, and it, it doesn't look like that it's relevant now. It may become relevant. It may or may not become relevant ever. Yeah, I bet that's what I'm hearing on most of these, which is, you know, I'm just doing that. Happy judge is a informed <laughs> judge because you know, you told us, hey, if you see something, raise it now. Sure. Don't waste time. So if the state is just throwing everything that they served in discovery that may become relevant, then these are my objections. Okay. And to the extent that I can consider them, I, I, I appreciate being forewarned about them so I can rule on them accordingly. Because then, so now I have context. And then, yeah. and then the, um, you know, just just Mr. Treadwell, like I said, he's not a witness. I don't I don't know any way it comes into evidence. So that's my belief. So I well, understand it may not be used, but you know, just thinking ahead, I don't. I see sure. not on the witness list. So how is that going to be used? So I raise it to the court. I got you. Okay. It's going to be the same with the next one. All right, and that is um, a telephone call from Mr. Stevens. Is that Trontavia Stevens? I believe it is. Sir. To Mr. Allison. I believe it is. Ms. Allison is not on the witness list. Okay. State. Your Honor, Rodney Allison, we're not going to introduce his statement. We are not throwing up everything. This is an anticipation of um, the evidence that we know will be admitted or that we will be tendering. Um, if they deal with a particular statement made by a person, um, Rodney Allison 
um, Mr. Treadwell, these are all persons with whom the police interacted. Again, we will not elicit hearsay. We know the proper foundation to be laid for items of evidence. It is, again, extremely premature. Um, we can list out the items that, I, I mean, this is, again, this is uh, premature. We will, if something happens that causes us to say, okay, Your Honor, based on this line of questioning by Mr. Steele, the state believes that it is now proper <coughs> to do X as it relates to the list of exhibits. We would do that and we would not, you know, we would not spring anything on them that they haven't notice of that we intended to introduce. And I'll take so, up, go Right, ahead. and so that's, that's where we are, y'all. All right. Anything else, Mr. Steele? I go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I apologize. I thought you were talking. No, no, go ahead. <clears throat> um, just the uh, interview by lawyers of Mr. White, if that's going to be an issue, um, then I'd like to uh, um, do something with some uh, witnesses in the state's case. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm not certain what that statement means. If there is an issue regarding lawyers' interviews of Mr. White, he who's Mr. White? To, um, one of our witnesses that the state has um, did a production order for that we will be bringing up. He was in a car with Ms. Murphy at, uh, with Mr. Uh, Montgomery at the time that he was fired on and shot. He was one of the victims in this particular act regarding Dexter Montgomery. So I don't know what we'll be calling on what the state's witnesses. I'm not certain what that means. Mr. Steele, of course, can call on whomever he wants at the time he, if he chooses to put up anything. Um, but I'm not certain what these words mean. The state is always pursuant to 24-6622, able to inquire into uh, a witness's feelings towards and relationships to parties. Um, as the court's aware, it may always be proved for the consideration of the jury. Um, and so any particular uh, feelings that the witness may or may not have towards uh, Mr. Steele, whom the witness uh, identified as knowing was the defendant's lawyer, is a matter that may be made, an inquiry may be made into. It's just that the reality of things. They interviewed him, the, the witness, we know that they interviewed him, the witness made some comments, we shared them with them, we shared the comments that the witness made with the defense that does not preclude the state from uh, inquiring or making inquiry into any um, statements that the witness made or testimony the witness may give uh, that somehow uh, maybe influenced or affected by their feelings or relationships towards towards the defendants in this case and towards someone that they believe represents um, one of the defendants in this case. Certainly if the witness uh, has some kind of bias, uh, the state is entitled to explore that, uh, as is the defense. If the witness has a bias uh, towards the state or against any of the defendants, so I'm not certain what the, the motion in limine regarding this particular witness is asking the court to do, but I do hope it's not to curtail the state's ability or anyone's ability to inquire into any potential bias or any particular feelings that any witness has towards a party or anyone with whom they interacted in this case as it relates to uh, either the defendants or the state. All right, Mr. Steele, Mr. White is not mentioned in either of your motion. Um, Uh, 45 or 46 motions in limine. Uh, where is he coming from? Um, that was an email that the district attorney sent to the court and the parties saying that Mr. White um, made statements that um, I, as well as other people, interviewed him that um, he, found it, he found it weird, found me weird. I was asking questions about Walter Murphy, and I 
know that Walter Murphy is close with Jeffrey Williams, and if the state wants to introduce that, there's other information that I'd like to take immediately. You brought the state's presentation evidence to put on other information immediately when the state this. Why would you be able to put on something in their case in chief? You don't have to present anything, Mr. Steele. So I would probably defer to you if you decide to call people in your case you know, and, and present a case in chief, because um, at this point you have no responsibility to do that. But I would I would not permit you to enter into to call witnesses in the state's case in chief. two reasons, Judge. This is an effort to uh, quell or chill the state's ability okay. to make examinations, proper examinations of witnesses. Mr. Steele has no question that he has heard that entitles him to any kind of relief. If the state makes a, or asks the witness a question, the proper time to enter an objection to that question is when an improper question is asked and at that time the court has stated what it is willing to do but Mr. Steele has an obligation to make contemporaneous objections not predict and try and curtail what the state uh, may properly ask of witnesses and um, are entitled to make inquiry into uh, in order to prove its case so we would ask that the court deny any such motion made by Mr. Steele at this time um, until if there is a question that Mr. Steele believes is improper, he make that objection at that time. That is what he is required to do in order to preserve his um, rights with respect to rulings. And there is just nothing at this time to be ruled on. Mr. Um, this witness did not say that Mr. Steele knows that Mr. Murphy and Mr. Williams are friends. The witness said he himself knows that they are like this, as he put it, like this. And we, what we did was we gave to counsel for the defendants an oral statement that was given to one of our lawyers and our investigators by a witness. So now Mr. Steele is going to go through and try and keep the state from eliciting information from the witness on the stand in proving the case, the state's case in chief. Um, he's gonna preemptorily uh, curtail our examination. That's not proper. The proper time for Mr. Steele to enter or to make his objections is if there is an improper question posed. <coughs> yeah. Your Honor. So Mr. Steele, hold on. I'll wait till, the, till Mr. White is presented as a witness, and depending upon what he says, I'll make certain decisions at that point, okay? It, and but thank you for bringing it to my attention. Yes, um, Honor, Mr. To, uh, Sharp. Thank you, Your Honor. Just to follow up with Mr. Steele's concerns, I also have similar concerns because I am similarly situated as Mr. Steele in, in, in this regard. And, you know, Mr. You White said, talking about your client as well? Well, me. Is he talking, is Mr. White talking about? Mr. White wasn't really talking about anyone's client. He was talking about attorneys. So and, and oh, may I finish? But, and, but and rudeness doesn't be up to anybody, okay? Your Honor, just, I, just, 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 this is a conversation, okay? So, okay, well, and the jury's not in a box, it's just me. 
So. I understand, and I'm just trying to get a couple words in. And, Your Honor, so we, um, there's a concern that if the state wants to go down this road, and, and you, you say a forewarned judge is a happy judge, and I understand that, and that's why we're trying to forewarn the court. If the state wants to go down this road, um, I don't think it's going to end well for them. This but road also, of what? This road of what? It, of, of what Mr. White's saying, it's not going to end well for them, but additionally, it's going to turn into a mini trial. Which implicates what Mr. White you. says about you as lawyers is not relevant anyways. Well, that's kind it's of not. I mean, so that's, that's exactly our point, Your Honor. So and, so and, if, if that's the case, then I'll make a, appropriate rulings at that time. OK. And, and all we're saying is that th those would need to be discussions outside the presence of the jury. And that's all we're saying. Your Honor. No, you're not going to preempt the witness. You're not going to I'm not previewing the witness's testimony. You make a ballot objection. I'll hear it. OK. But I, I'm going to I'm going to tell the state, I'm going to tell you all that you all are not the are not the focus of the trial. I so agree. please don't ask questions about one another yes, exactly. and what they said and what you all did and whatever. I don't want to hear it. In fact, it's improper. The rules of professional responsibility don't allow it. So stop it on either side. I don't want that to occur ever again in this trial. Am I clear? Miss Love? All right. Okay. And, Your Honor, what I wanted to say in response to what Mr. Um, Sharp said is that there literally was nothing that was offered by the witness regarding these lawyers as it relates to the fact that anything that he said, all that was said was that Mr. Steele, an involved white attorney, and a young um, African-American no, no. female had to visit. Attractive. I don't remember hearing attractive at all. But, um, Your Honor, all that was said is that they came to visit them. And there's nothing, there's no, except to the extent that there is something that is elicited on cross examination regarding the witness's desire or willingness to speak to someone from the state or forced to speak to someone. All of that is exactly the type of information that has been elicited through, from witnesses. But it needs to stop. And, and it really does need to stop, Ms. Love, because it's not relevant. It's not relevant. It's not. I don't disagree. All right. So then it won't be a problem. I mean, the first question I hear about, it, I'm going to sustain the objection. So I don't want to hear about that. That's improper to begin with. I'm telling you right now, that line of questioning is, 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 is improper to elicit from the witness. Whatever the witness's motives for or giving information or whatever else, yeah, that can be, that can be explored, certainly. But the lawyers, you all should not be the focus. And Your Honor, with respect to any um, statements regarding what has been done, if there are recordings that are offered by either side that a witness reveals or states was not a full, accurate recording, our position is that it is absolutely a, a proper mode of inquiry as to whether Anyone started or stopped. If we're talking no, about we're not. We're not. I'm not going to get in that. When they see Miss Love, they don't have the burden like you do. Like you've said very, very eloquently a lot of times, and they don't have to reveal those statements quite yet. If they decide to present the case in chief, then certainly some things are going to be subject to being being recalled or, or examined in that respect. I can't force them to give them give you anything that might. It may make common sense to turn it over to you at this point in time, but law legally I can't because they haven't presented a case in chief yet. Right. So I think we've covered that already a couple of times, but let's not let's let's just not, let's just pass on that issue right now. Unfortunately, you know, they get to they get to ask your witnesses whatever and they may have some other information that you don't have at this point in time. However, um when, if, if and when they present their case in chief, then you can revisit those statements or those particular things. They would have to disclose them to you. I think they have, I think that they have to turn them over within seven days or thereabouts. So, um, but which, which I'll revisit at that point in time. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Yes. All right. We also um, are providing 
to uh, everyone, and I'm about to sit down, um, a, a trunk or a printout list of items that um, we anticipate we may be introducing and where it is found in discovery. Your Honor, this is uh, a little bit different. It's just uh, we, we, for the most part, have all of these in our PowerPoint. But um, we're, this is a exhibit number, like a specific number uh, list of exhibits that we intend to introduce to um, witness loss or mercy, and where these items are located in discovery. We also have, um, I believe we have oral statements um, from Walter Murphy that we want to make sure. Have they been reduced to writing? That's what we did. We reduced them to writing. I'm going to just provide <clears throat> When's Mr. Murphy supposed to be testifying? Last, later, like at the end of the week. All right, well, if there are issues that come up before then, I'll hear them at the, at the appropriate time, so if it's reduced to a motion limine or, or, or the like, but, yes. okay. All right, anything else? All right, I see y'all tomorrow morning for nine, nine o'clock, all right? All right, we're in recess. Thank mm -hmm.